starting. There it is. The well, hangout on air is live. So now let's go to the chat room and just make sure that people are seeing this. And say, hey, am I on TV? <laughs> am I on TV? Mom. Okay, so hold on. Let's just see if anybody is. I'm on the news. Oh, oh I see it right here. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, don't don't watch. Yeah, make sure that video and audio, well, is because you're going to get the lag if you don't turn the audio off on the actual one. Okay, on the now, podcast. all that I want to do is see some of the chat from time to time without seeing my face. All you have to do is pause, pause the video on YouTube, and then the chat will keep going. And if you want, you could even, there's a button in the upper, the three dots in the upper right-hand corner of the chat. You can say, pop out chat. And if you pop out chat, you can even close the window at that point because chat will be in its own separate thing. But that's totally you know, up to you. I'm not even going to get involved in the chat on this. I'm just going to make sure that I it is the chat is live. Okay, so let's just see. I'm going to ask, uh, can everyone see us? And hear us. And hear, hear us. And when we have a yes to this question, hello. It'll take, it'll take a second or two because it's delayed on their side. We got Natalie Buzaglu, a Russian name that I can't read. Hamilton. Oh, that's, yes. that's one of the Russian agents that follows me. <laughs> no, right, not well, kidding. Not kidding. She's a female from from uh, Belarus. Absolutely Russian agent. <laughs> okay. Wait, we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves already. Okay. Uh, do I want to see the chat? I don't think I do. I'm gonna. No, you know what? I need to see the chat. Okay. So let's get going. We're going to go live. We're live, and I'm going to lay out the ground rules and explain to everybody what's going on because Mark and I have had two discussions, and I want everyone to know what we discussed because this is uncharted territory for me. Um, I told Mark that I'm going to ask him questions the way I would ask anybody in sort of, let's call it cross-examination, except we're not trying to prove a case here. I'm just trying to right. get some satisfactory answers to questions that I have, to questions that I have to understand how someone like Mark believes what Mark believes sure. vis-a-vis uh, -vis the shape of the earth. Sure. Um, so we've had two discussions. I didn't want to get any advanced answers to the questions, and I didn't want Mark to know the questions I'm going to ask just so that it's fresh and new for all of us. Um, That's true. And I can actually state for the record that I have not received any questions from you, and you were really good about not – and I knew what you were doing. It's like, let's not waste any of this. Let's I, just I, do it like first impressions. I want it to be new to me, and I want everyone also to know that this is – there's nothing rehearsed. There's going to be nothing edited about it, and that's why we're doing it live so that uh, right. there will be no no doubts as to what's going on. And okay. Mark, if I ask you anything that is off limits, I mean, I'm not going to press you, but I'm going to ask the question just because I want to know. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Personally. Okay. Um, okay, and everyone's going to ask questions, and it can ask questions. I've got uh, Ian Corzine. If anybody doesn't know him, he's another YouTube lawyer who does actually very, very branded, dedicated legal stuff on YouTube. He's moderating, so I, he has my text number. He's going to text me any questions I don't get to, but uh, I'll be reading the chat as much as I can without getting too distracted. You know, it's it's not often that, that there's actually a lawyer moderating a chat. That's got to <laughs> that's got to spook some people. We've got a lawyer conducting the chat and a lawyer moderating the chat. Exactly. <laughs> YouTube law. <laughs> don't don't make any mistakes, trolls. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Yeah. Let's get the ele the elephant out of the room, or at least address the elephant right away, Mark. Serious question, no jokes, no judgment. What shape is the Earth? The Earth is absolutely positively 100% put it in a certificate you can frame flat. In fact, it's not just flat. It is enclosed. I should, I should specify that. Meaning we are in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it gets a little more complicated from that. But the simple answer is you are in a flat world that's enclosed. Okay, and now when you say flat, it, you mean actually flat, with no curvature whatsoever. No curvature whatsoever. Of course, there's going, you know, there's mountains, there's valleys and stuff like that, you know, for, for no, no different than, let's say, uh, a record uh, that just dates me, of course, a record on a record player. The record is not perfectly smooth. There's all sorts of divots in there, you know, high and low peaks on a, on a, on a vinyl record. But from one tip to the other tip, it's absolutely level. Okay, now let's, we've got that done. We're going to come back to that, people. So don't anyone like start smashing your computer screen. To the beginning, Mark, right. um, how many siblings do you have? One. One sibling, and your your parents? Uh, your parents divorced back in the 80s. Uh, father lives in, I don't know where my father is. I've spoken to my father in a long, long time. Uh, mother lives up on the island. And now, are you Canadian? Uh, are you born in Canada? 
No, no, but it's interesting you would mention that because I spent a year in I lived a year in Canada just in uh, 2017. Oh, okay, well, hold on. And another another preface here. I did minimal research for this um, for this live stream, not because I want to remain ignorant or be That's ignorant, because I don't want to be influenced in terms of what you're going to say, what I'm going to ask. Okay. And my research actually was uh, limited to Logan Paul's one hour mockumentary. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Which we will get to. Oh. Um, so you're but you're you're American. Yes, I'm American, uh, born and raised in uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, born, in fact, born in Seattle and then was raised, uh, if anyone knows the northwest of the country, uh, just south of the San Juan Islands on an island called Whidbey, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. Um, and were your parents religious or did you have any sort of religious upbringing? Yes, uh, my family was religious. My mom more than my dad, uh, but church was definitely not just a Sunday thing. A uh, very strong evangelical Christian. So went to youth group and vacation Bible school and Camp Malibu, uh, but then fell away from that as soon as I left the island. It was a very sheltered place to grow up. I didn't even know there were other religions, honestly, <laughs> until I left. And for the uh, overt ignorant, your religion, your specific, call it subcategory within the religion? Uh, evangelical Protestant born again. Okay. Um, okay. Is there, is there... And so you're brought up, you're brought up with strict religious, um, not, not strict, but, but very enthusiastic. Uh, the high school, it was very much the click to be in, in high school. Uh, because you know, once you got a certain number of people in a, in a, in a click, it became cool. And so there was a very strong church click that belonged to this one particular church and there was a lot of kids involved in it. Okay, now I'm just gonna bring this up so I can see a little bit more of the chat so I can know oh, that's fine. what people are thinking here. Um, okay, that's gonna be too distracting. Now, uh, okay, so look, this is the question. Have you always thought the earth was flat or did you at some point think it was round and then come back to thinking it was flat? Uh, first off, since we're going to do that legal thing, uh, the, the flat earth community actually doesn't even use the word round anymore. We use uh, ball sphere globe because round, technically your dinner plate is round. Your dining room table is round. Round could be two dimensional or three dimensional. But to your question, uh, no, are you kidding? I never thought the earth was flat. I thought the flat earth was a terrible, awful, horrible thing. And everybody does. Nobody gets into flat earth thinking it's a great idea. Everybody hates it. And everybody gets into the t-shirt reads, literally, I got into flat earth because I tried to disprove it. Everyone tries, it's like the little La Brea tar pits. You look at it, it's like pff, cake. I can totally shut this thing down on a weekend. And then two weeks later, you're, you're, you're not sleeping. You're calling in sick for work. You're watching videos. You're watching videos going, okay, why can't I prove this anymore? So no, I did not even look at flat earth. I didn't even glance at it until 2014. All right. And now um, going before 2014, education. Yes. Previous jobs. Got it. Uh, education. Went to... <laughs> a little varied. Uh, drank my freshman year of, uh, of, of university away. By the way, I use the word university because outside the United States, college and university are completely different things. And I knew this from living in Canada for a year. Uh, college is, te is a technical college outside of the United States. And university is university. But you know, in America, college and university, exactly the same thing. So I drank my first year of university and then went to another university later and studied. Remember, this is back in the late 80s. So tech was very, very limited. Uh, business administration and then thrown out my junior year for manufacturing explosives on campus. Okay, well, actually, we should bring it back so you can see my face as a, I, I couldn't... <laughs> Mark, in, this, in some ways, you and I have similar uh, similar uh, student student histories. Um, I'm, I'm joking. I was I had a sort of a tumultuous high school life, but I went to three high schools in five years. Oh wow! Never manufactured explosives, but uh, um, I had my fireworks. Had my the, fire that's fire. officially officially the term is fireworks because there's a lot of Native American uh, res. res reservations up here and they need supply and i was I'm, i was always good at chemistry so i think i didn't get into meth right uh and so i made fireworks and uh eventually i got caught and but luckily for me it was in the 80s or officially it was in the early 90s when the, the whole indictment thing went down and so the penalties were very very m modest so right. it was okay Never, I mean, not that it changes anything for anything, but you never went to jail for that. It was just... Uh... Nope, nope, nope. Uh, probation, community service, that sort of thing, which got me into computers because uh, since my, there was a lot of teachers in my family, I grew up in a teacher's lounge, basically. 
uh, I got to teach. You can do community. A lot of people don't know this. You can do community service at schools if they allow you to do it. Of course, most of them would never allow you in there. But since I knew all the teachers that were in these schools, I was like, oh, yeah. So I, I became uh, a teacher's aide for uh, the computer science department. And that's how I got into computers. And then you did what in computers for how long? Oh, I'm sorry. So I did that until the, the service was over. And then uh, because it was the island and you can do just about anything you want, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I was a sous chef for three years <clears throat> at a Greek restaurant. And then while I was doing that, I was still doing computer stuff. And I played this computer game tournament, this worldwide tournament uh, from a publisher. That, uh, the developer was in Japan and the publisher was in Boulder, Colorado. And I won it in uh, 94. And part of the prize was to test out some of their new games. Not much of a prize, in my opinion. But I tested it and hated it and wrote this scathing review and, and pointed out all these problems that were in the game. They said, you know what? You should hire this guy. So I ended up going out to Boulder, Colorado and playing video games for a living for several years until that. Most of the time, if you're going to play video games, it would be Southern California, Northern California. But I played it in Colorado. And then when that company eventually folded, I jumped over. Boulder was a great time for startup companies in tech and ended up teaching proprietary software for the better part of 20 years. So that's what I did over there. I just literally stayed in Boulder, never got married, never had kids and just traveled around the country and taught people in blue collar factories, complicated software. How do I, I boiled it down? For one in the same company or sort of in various companies? Uh, half and half. The 20 one, it, was, it was all time and attendance companies, which was weird because there were only a handful of time and attendance, timekeeping software. So when you punch in something, if you have to swipe a badge at a door with a time clock, there's only a handful of companies in the country that do that. And two of them were in Boulder, which was weird. So I worked for one and then ended up jumping over to another one. And that's what I did for the most part. Okay. And now... If anyone's asking, like it, it, when we conduct examinations, we would like to know a little bit about the history of the person, sure. uh, and so that anybody who wants to either attribute more credit or discredit him can, you know, know a bit of the historical upbringing and as to how that person got to where they are. Right. When was your uh, when when was your aha moment where you said uh, you started looking into it and just and determined or decided that the Earth was flat? Okay. So I again because I was in the tech and if you're older and I'm older. Uh, if you're in the tech industry long enough, uh, you were there when the internet was first starting out. And so anyone that's been in the internet long enough knows there's rabbit holes everywhere. There's conspiracy stuff all over the internet. And I'd gone through them all. So the running joke in the commercial was I finished the internet several times over because the, the internet just wasn't that big. And I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy. And in 2014, it was on, it wasn't even on my bucket list. It was just one of those things I looked at it. I, it was recommended to me in YouTube, this little thing about flat earth by a guy in Germany. And I thought, yeah, you know what? At least I can say I did it. I'll just look at it. I'll stomp on it. It'll be done. It'll go on my list of terrible conspiracies that I don't believe in, like uh, Elvis is still alive and, and stuff like that. Or Elvis had Bigfoot's baby. And then it, I realized there were, there were every, every time I thought I had it nailed down, there were, always seemed to be this loose thread. There were all these loose ends everywhere. And I was going, why can't I close the book on this thing? Until nine months later, I'm be beating my head on my keyboard. And at the beginning of 2015, I said, you know what? I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to say, I believe it's flat. I'm going to put basically put a series of videos out to the internet hive mind. Because the internet hive mind is very, very smart. And said, okay, I'm going to shut this thing down. You, but I need help. Tell me where I went wrong. I think it's flat because bo -bo 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 -bo. tell me how I went wrong. And I put the videos out there in rapid succession. Uh, first time I ever did any video editing. I narrated for the first time in my life. I made it was very an inspired Jerry Maguire moment. And then all of a sudden, and, and I thought seriously, some academic was going to call me up and shut it down. But the opposite happened, uh, where people were calling me from all walks of life, uh, subject matter experts and people that want to interview me and just general population. And they were all saying the same thing. It's like, you know what? You may be on to something. So man, that was four years ago. Here we are now. Um, about now, this is the one piece of information that I did incidentally get out of you when we were discussing, but you're doing this full time now. This is this is. Yeah, it was it, if I live long enough to write an autobiography, it would be called unsolicited because everything came at me without me having to lift a finger. That was the weird part where uh, other than making the initial clues, everybody that contacted me regarding financial opportunities. Uh, they just, you know, slowly but surely. And when, it, you know, if you believe in fate or how the world works or how the universe works, when I needed it. 
And so all of a sudden, immediately, uh, a little radio show called me up, a little conspiracy radio network said, hey, how would you like to do? They heard me being interviewed on something and they said, how would you like to do your own show? I mean, no, I mean, I, completely out of the blue. I said, I mean, they want an answer like right then and there. I'm going, OK, and, and what are you going to call it? Like, oh, strange world. So we did that. And then uh, a publisher out of London called me and said, hey, how would you like to turn your, your clues into a book? Do I have to do anything? Nope. You just send us the transcripts. We'll take care of the rest. And they did literally illustrations, the whole nine yards. I just signed off on it. Um, and then Google out of all, all, all things, they contacted me directly. I mean, anyone knows if you're in YouTube, you're going to get solicited by different networks inside of YouTube, you know, cause there's different groups. It's like, Oh, we'll help you. We'll help you, uh, promote your, your channel. Just sign your life away. Uh, but Google contacted me directly and said, you know what, you might want to mo start monetizing your channel. And I'm going, OK, because I hadn't for like the first six months. And in fact, I made even to this day, everything just, I have is Creative Commons license, if it's possible, if there's not like music or something in it that I use. And so between all those things and uh, little events that I go to or you know, public speaking things it actually pays the bills. And now, um, because you know what, you've probably heard it all, and it's for right or for wrong, you've probably been called either, well, and some people are going to say the same thing, you've been called either crazy, delusional, or opportunistic. Right. And I'm not trying to put you in that corner, but people are going to say, if you're making a living now off of promoting this theory, and right. you're not one of the first two, then you're probably the third. Um, so, I mean, just I, for my own benefit, you monetize your channel, you right. presumably get paid for your speaking appearances at the, uh, at the Flat Earth Conference. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, you have a, I saw on IMBD, you had a few documentaries or some videos in your, in your, your no, career. no. IMDB is weird. If you have people that f listen to you, they can go into IMDB and I don't know exactly the, the rules around that. And they could post things on your behalf. It's sort of like if, if all of a sudden uh, there was a wiki page created by you. I mean, sometimes you would do it. I don't know if you have a wiki page, by the way. Not, not yet. Not yet. But, that's right. But, but sometimes people will do it for you. If, you, if you're popular enough, someone will get inspired and they will just go in and just start tacking stuff on to you. And then it'll say, well, you need more. It'll, it'll say we need clarification and stuff like that. But no, I, in fact, the documentary Behind the Curve, which I, I don't know if you uh, you did see that, right? I saw the Netflix one, which was either the Netflix was Behind the Curve. Yeah, and yeah, was Behind the Curve. So that one, I mean, I've never made a dime off of any. Uh, in fact, documentaries, the subjects don't make docu you know, make money. That's the whole point of the documentary. Otherwise, they'd just be actors and it would be a movie. Uh, but no, they, they approached me. I signed my life away right away because in most cases, look, document you got to understand the odds of a film even making it to Netflix are so unbelievably small that we, I mean, everyone in Flat Earth is just basically saying yes to everything because why wouldn't we? It's like you're never the odds are that it's not going to get finished anyway. So. Uh, when they made it, a perfect example would be uh, the film festival schedule last year. There were 3,000 sub films submitted to the Toronto Film Festival. Out of those, they chose 100, and we were one of those. And out of those, even fewer number get picked up by you know iTunes and and um, uh, Amazon and stuff like that. And so, and they and and even the people that made the film, they're like, you know, it's going to take forever if it sells at all. It sold them almost immediately. Well, I mean, it is, this this is a trending topic. In oh, terms yeah. of conspiracy theories are trending in general. This one in particular, because of its, call this one more polarizing, and most people don't consider it to be as serious a conspiracy right. as other conspiracies that are out there. Right. Um, but you you do merchandise this. You sell shirts and things like that. I imagine. No, no. I, in fact, it's, I didn't think I didn't realize that the T-shirts. I I know there's a lot of YouTube channels that do merch. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, they do a brand name like, you know, Logan Paul and, and just about every channel that has over one or two million subs has some sort of merch thing. Uh, no, nah, I it just I mean, there's there's T-shirts that are sold, but not by me. I mean, oh, oh no, don't get me wrong. There's tons of Flat Earth T-shirts that are sold out there, uh, but it's really a loose organization of people. Yeah, there, in fact, there's one um, uh, there's a guy that helps me produce Strange World. Uh, where his daughter is actually doing the t a t-shirt shop and it's like, okay, sure. Great. Fantastic. Have fun with it. I'm not going to make a dime off of it. Uh, okay. I, I, what I try to tell people is look, I don't want to be famous or rich. I just want to be right. Uh, if there's money in it, Hey, great. Fantastic. I'm not going to go looking for it. Uh, because right now I, I honestly believe that whatever's meant to be is meant to be. And so far that's been true. I mean, everybody that's reached out for an interview, everybody that's, that's contacted me as a subject matter expert. Uh, they've just contacted me. It's like, great, fantastic, but I'm not going to turn them down. I mean, yeah, there's some obvious scammers and stuff like that, but uh, I, I try to weed those out if I can. 
Okay, well, I mean, look, now we've, if anyone's going to discredit you for, let's call it living off of the subject that's out there, and now we're going to move uh, to the actual subject. And it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a fair, uh, it's a, look, it's a fair criticism because. Oh, yeah, and, and but look, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, for example, I'm looking at the, the, the conference schedule this year. I mean, there's no way I could do a normal gig and do this conference schedule. I'm, I'm going to be in New Zealand. I mean, there's a New Zealand conference in April, uh, a Calgary one in May, Stockholm, September, UK, September, Mount Shasta, September, Amsterdam, and we finish out the year in Dallas. How in the world would I be able to do anything like that? I mean, yeah, and of course, they, you know, they're going to pay for plane tickets and hotel, and if they want to throw something at me, great, fantastic. Uh, but they asked me to come, and I, look, I'm just going with this wave wherever it's taken me. Okay, well, let's let's get into it now because I think that's okay. – I don't, I don't need to know any more financial details. But that's, Okay, no, no, that's fine. No, it's good. I'm glad you asked. People are going to want to know, and they'll, they'll draw their own conclusions. Right. You have your one um, most damning or most convincing piece of evidence to submit to someone who thinks you're nuts. I mean, right. what, what is your number one argument for why the earth is flat? The number one argument that I wouldn't, in fact, it wasn't even my argument. It was just something that came out of, because when I did the clues, there was no, there was no math or anything like that. But sorry, short answer would be long distance photography more, more than anything, which is if you go to, uh, people and you say, how can you prove to me the globe without using the space program? Throw out the space programs. And and they say, why do I have to sw throw out the space programs? I go, well, obviously, you know, it's not like NASA created the globe in 1972. It's not like we woke up because that was when the first blue marble shot was taken, right? And so you, it's not like you woke up one day in 1972 and said, oh, look at that. It is a globe. Whew, you know, glad that that's over with. Uh, so if you throw out the space programs, most people will say ships going over the horizon, right? That is that's like like the number one answer outside of NASA, uh, which is ships going over the horizon. I go, yeah, ten years ago, I wouldn't right there with you because I was one of you, which is why I can't get mad at anyone that comes at me. By the way, I can't get upset because I was you. I was absolutely. In fact, I hated. I was one of the few people. There's no one in the flat Earth community that did what I did. One of my hobbies, one of the collecting. I um, again, I'm older. I collected knickknacks. I used to collect antique globes. Literally, I had world maps all over the place. And I joked, it's like to remind me of in case I get hit on the head, you know, where I am, you know, type of thing. And then when I got into this, I had to get rid of them all. So ships going into the horizon. Ten years ago, yep, you were absolutely at the camera technology we had. You could zoom in. Well, we'll use VHS technology or Super 8 or whatever they had. Zooming in, boat is gone. Then HD came out. And HD changed the game to where now that boat is gone, supposedly gone over the horizon. Remember, the, the curvature of the Earth, if you believe in mainstream science, we didn't make this up, is eight inches per mile, not trying to scare anybody here with math, squared. That's it. And it's weird when you say this, and, and this freaks people out, because if you say eight inches per mile, and they're going totally with you, totally eight inches per mile, I got that, squared. They forget everything they ever knew about junior high algebra. They, they just freaks them out. They're like, I have no idea what that means. I'm going, it's eight inches per mile per mile, which means every mile times itself times eight inches. So if it's three miles, it's three times three is nine times eight is 72 inches, about six feet. 10 times 10 miles is 10 times 10, which is 100 times eight is 800 inches. It gets steep. It gets worse and worse and worse until, because remember, if it's a ball, it's going to go vertical eventually. So what's my point? My point is eventually a boat is going to go off in the distance so far. It doesn't even have to be a boat. It can be a lighthouse. It could be a body, you know, a landmass on the other side. Eventually, you're going to, uh, there's going to be something off in the distance that's going to be on the other side of the curve, behind the curve. You can't, it's gone forever. It's on the other side of the hill. And yet everybody, for whatever reason, again, I'm just totally tickled that everyone did this, ran down to the beaches all over the place with, with HD cameras and cranked up the zoom. And they could now see objects that were far, far beyond the visual range. Should have been, should have been gone, should have been gone forever. And they're there. The boat now, you, the boat's gone. You, you let it go off in the distance, you crank it up. Hey, the boat's back in frame. Let it go off again, crank it up. Hey, the boat's back in frame again. Well, it's like, okay, how far can that boat go off, uh, off before you? someone said, well, it's impossible. You can't see that boat anymore. You can't see that lighthouse. And that's the probably the most, a picture is worth a thousand words. And that is the most compelling thing that people run into because it's easy to do. You can do it anywhere. And it happens in every kind of weather condition. So like, for example, real quick, um, Chicago skyline, which is a great one that people use, uh, 50 miles across, across Lake Michigan, right? 50 miles, which is about 1,600, 1,700 feet of curvature. Well, Chicago is not that high. 
1700 feet. It's not even close. And you can see all the buildings and you can see that in any weather condition, any light condition, we've got time lapse. It's not snapshots. It's time lapse. There's, it's not no, it's, there's no inferior mirage or superior mirage. There's nothing inverted. It's always there. In fact, the challenge that, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. No, the, the no, challenge I, I, that I so it came back to my face here. <laughs> the, the, the challenge, the challenge that I put out to anyone in science is find me an object at less than 150 miles, give or take, that we can't see. That you say, you know, no matter what you do, you will never see that lighthouse over there because it's behind the curve. We always, always see it. In fact, the only, my last qualifier here, the only reason we can't see, people say, well, if that's the case, why can't you see Japan from San Francisco or Europe from New York and stuff like that? I'm going, well, that because you're looking basically through something that's only 99% transparent. Remember, what we're breathing in here is mostly transparent. It's like a thin version of water, though. It gets thicker and thicker and thicker as it compounds over time. So if you took out the atmosphere, I bet you you could. I bet you could see. In fact, when you look at planes, uh, sorry, I, I, I got to stop. When you get planes up at 30,000 feet, you can and turn on like an infrared filter on it, on it. You can see distances that are ridiculously far, even at 30,000 feet. Even when you take into account the 30,000 feet, you can see hundreds and hundreds of miles. Okay, you should so not be able to see them. Go ahead. I got, I'm going to interrupt because I just saw Jude, one of Judith Scott's comments, which was you can see the buildings, but not their bases, which which uh, something which actually brings back something that I did here. Right. Without getting into the, I, I read somewhere that the this famous calculation of eight by eight uh, by three was a somewhat of an oversimplification of the math. And to be it, it is, it is. But it under is. under 500 miles, you're, you're absolutely right because once you get because it's a slope, it gets weirder. You're, you're right. There's no way it would ever be eight inches per mile per mile perfectly throughout the entire globe. But less than 500 miles, eight inches per mile squared is absolutely fine. You can do that. It, it works like a charm. Okay, and set and setting that aside because one tactic that people often use it seems like a, it's a it's, it's a magician's tactic is yeah. they'll use a formula that is too complicated for people who don't know to contradict and then right. sort of you know not bombard them but rather sort of intimidate them with the calculation right. but getting to the, the basics of what you're saying is that you think something you can always see something and it doesn't actually go beyond the curve but I mean, what are you going to say? Because I've seen the, I've seen this particular picture is right. the boat where you can see the cargo, but not the hull because precisely right. because it's beyond the curve. Right. And and the same with the building, by the way, most of that. And again, we did not make this stuff up. We had to trust me. We looked into it as well, which was not, what something is called atmospheric lensing. Remember what I, I, what I said earlier, whereas we're looking through sort of a thin version of water. So if water is H2O, we are breathing in again. The average person doesn't even know this. We're breathing N4O which is, again, throws people for a loop. It's like, we're not breathing in oxygen. Oh, yeah, but only about 20% oxygen. The rest is nitrogen. So okay. when when you're looking off of the distance, that thin version of water is acting like a lens, actually literally acting like a magnifying lens. And if you do a magnifying lens, uh, look it up if you get a chance. It actually will cut off the bottom and start magnifying stuff towards the top. But it absolutely does work that way. And but again, the bigger point is, why can you see the object at all? I know people are stuck on that, where it's like, well, yeah, you, you get the you get the chopped, you know, the chopped bottom. It's like, no, 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 no. How can you see it at all? We're talking about 1,700 feet of curvature. I don't care if, you know, you say, oh, we're missing 200 feet at the bottom or whatever, which again, atmospheric lensing. How can they, they get stuck on that? It's like, how can you see any of it? It's gone. It should be absolutely gone. And then no. they say, well, it's refraction. No, well, no, I don't think that's the the explanation. I think part of the explanation is it depends on the height of the viewing point to the I, object. Oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. But look, the 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 time lapse that was taken at the beach uh, a couple of years ago, again, not by one of us, by one of mainstream media guys. It was he was six feet off the beach, not not high, high at all. It, trust trust me when I say this. Yes, I know we're fully aware of the elevation formula, but most of, that's why most of our guys get down at beach level. Absolutely beach level. In fact, we did it. There was a wonderful test. I, uh, uh, if you want to look up something, look up, and I know it's tough because there's so much content out there. Look up flat earth 7.53 frozen. That's about the only way you're going to find it with a Boolean string because there's just so many videos out there. And that was a husband and wife team went to a frozen lake. He put the camera, the tripod literally on the ice and she put a flashlight, not even a laser, put the flashlight, you know, one of those square boxy flashlights literally on the ice. 7.53 miles. Perfect. He, she had a cell phone. He had a cell phone. They're talking to each other. He's got the whole thing. And his, his thing is his camera is literally, I think a foot and a half off the ice. Both, you know, both were perfect. 
How do you, how would you explain that? Well, I, I, I might, um, and I only saw this link because someone posted it in the comment, but I might con counter that with uh, the National Geographic one of the guy who. Oh my God. All right. All right. I was there. <laughs> okay. Na National Geographic. Oh. Okay, I don't, I don't want to drag the National Geographic too much because they, they had me come down for this thing. We shot for three days. And here's the part that, that most people don't even know. We have this documented all over YouTube. And that was that for three days, they, they shot it and they didn't release it until, oh, about, what, a month ago? Maybe a month and a half ago. It took a month to release it. The the guy with the raft, with, with the stripes, uh, there, there was in the raft, that was their backup experiment. The main experiment, which they completely edited out of, was the balloons at 10 miles away on the other side of the lake where they and always, most people, they're, they're rookies when they get into this. You got to realize that something that's 10 miles away is really, really, really small. And, and if you don't know, have any identifying landmarks, you can't find it. And we could find it. They couldn't even figure out where the balloons were. What they were going to do was raise them, raise them, raise them. And then we were going to, you know, we we're going to say, OK, you can see them. But they said, well, you won't be able to see it on the beach because it's on the other side of the curve. Well, there's a problem there. And that is, how do you know where to look if you don't know, you know, if if you don't have anything markers? We found it with our P900s. We found it almost immediately. We said, look, there it is. And they were on the radio. We got them on the radio we're saying, no, 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 they can't see it. It's like, no, what are you talking about? We can see it. It's right there. That segment turned out so badly, they just erased it just erased it from the thing. And all they had was the the stupid uh, raft going out at three miles, which was absolutely silly. They didn't even show the calculations. They showed no graphics exactly how far that thing was. Plus, you could see the shoreline behind them and the entire boat. Ugh. Don't don't get me started with National Geograf Geographic. Well, no, it's not, it's not a question of getting you started with National Geographic. It's just a question of getting you started with the fact that um, certain things are not observable beyond the curve. As you say, your explanation for that is going to be... Um, Atmospheric cleansing. Atmospheric cleansing. Or, call, or atmospheric distortion, fat and organa. Take your pick. They're all basically the same thing. Okay. Now, and I believe there's a counter to that, but at the very least... Um, oh, that's fine. No, no, no. And then the thing is this. It, again, I, I'm, the purpose is not for me to, to like catch you in a... In, in a no, spot no, no. It's okay. Because I'll tell you, I, I don't think I will ever do it. I don't think anyone's going to ever do it. Um, but at least anybody who says, what's the explanation? Atmospheric cleansing, and now people can go and verify yep. whether or not that has any scientific base or whether or not it's been well, well no, it was again it wasn't us there was the, the reason why we even knew about atmospheric lensing was we were giving uh some chicago news team grief because there was a weatherman that came on there and said oh this is a mirage and you it was a still shot of chicago when it was brilliant he goes yeah that's not actually chicago you're looking at a mirage we're going well wow, that's one of the most clear hd mirages i've ever seen and then he had to go to, to some university and he had to drag some scientists into this. And the scientists said, oh, well, it's atmospheric lensing. And, and we're going, well, but you're not you're not hurting us. You're helping us in this case because you're just saying, OK, here's why the bottom 200 feet is chopped off. But the bigger point is the bigger point isn't the chopping off of the bottom. The bigger point is, which is I know why we'll call them globalists, why yeah. globalists get stuck on it. But oh, no, no, I didn't I didn't object to the term globalist, but I just oh. I, you know, for anybody watching, Mark, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, you've created um, not a vicious circle, but something of a Zon Zononian paradox where you're saying w it should never get cut off. When it does get cut off, it's because of atmospheric lensing. And when I can't see it anymore, it's because of uh, the 99% clarity. So you've set a premise that you can never be disproven of. Kind of. But 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 you you worded it a little different than I would. No, because you said is, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it never would be cut off. I'm saying it shouldn't be there. Period. No, no. What, well, what you said was because of the curve. Oh, sorry. Let me rephrase. You yeah. said the, the only reason we can't see Japan is because you know air is only 99 percent clear. Right. Now you're saying that the only reason why the boat, the base of the boat is cut off is because of atmospheric lensing. Yes. You created premises where you can never be disproven because when that boat goes over the horizon and I no longer see it, it's because air is not 100% clear. And when the bottom is cut off, it's because of atmospheric lensing. And when I see it, it's because the earth is flat. No one can ever prove you wrong. Yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. Okay. No, no, no one can. I'm sorry, I've been doing this for four years. Nobody, and, and by the way, I gotta bring up something to you that you brought up earlier, because it, it, it didn't bug me, but I, I liked it, which was, you gotta understand that math, the, the whole thing with math, because we do not try to throw out complex math at all. We we try to stay as minimal as possible. In fact, even in the clues, I didn't even know what the curvature of the earth was when I made the clues, the, the eight inches per mile squared. The problem is, th is that most scientists, we'll call them globalists, most globalists, when they come at us, will come at us with every form of math ever. You know, it's like uh, they come at us with geometry and trig and calculus and quantum mechanics, take your pick, right? The problem is, 
is that the average person on the street doesn't even know basic algebra. And if they don't know that, and which is why I've told them time and time again, look, math will not save you in this argument. It will not, because if you're talking, if you're talking any sort of geometry or higher, or even advanced algebra or higher to the average person on the street, you might as well be playing a recording of a modem handshake. They are not hearing it. It's they just absolutely glaze over. It's like okay, because people. Sorry, not not to drag out the point. Uh, you you may appreciate this. Uh, Sun Tzu, Art of War. Uh, people are like water. They always take the path of least resistance. Yeah, yeah sure which is the short version of saying people are lazy. Well, no, yeah. it might be the short version of saying that you don't ask the layperson to do the lawyer's job. There are people with expertise, and you don't ask the layperson to understand the Constitution. That's why you have lawyers. Don't ask the layperson to understand complex scientific spatial math. That's what you have the experts for. Ooh, the yeah, which which is which also helps us because up until recently, uh, and I don't know how it happened exactly when when science kind of jumped the rails and became scientism, where they were when they put their stamp on something with men in the white coats. It was like we are right. The most arrogant line I ever heard was Neil deGrasse Tyson when he said, "Science is right whether or not you believe in it." That's like, ooh, that's a that's a slippery slope because if you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level, fine, I can test that. You want to tell me what the core of the Earth looks like? No, 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 no. Supposedly the core of the Earth is four thousand miles down, deepest hole ever drilled by the Germans and the Soviets, eight miles. Okay, this would be Mark. I'm gonna. Uh, this would be the moment in the examination where you the we're not going to complicate the discussion with other issues because this is my. Oh no, okay. that's fine. That's fine. But we'll get, we can get back to it later, but my fundamental issue with some of this is that from what I've seen, flat earth theorists right. are confounding a lot of other, say, quasi-legitimate conspiracy theories to justify their own legitimacy of this particular theory, which a lot of people just consider untenable. And, and sort of like confounding all of these things to justify one belief, which is, a, which is something that people do to themselves to justify to themselves what they want to believe is by confusing the issue. But just we'll, we'll summarize one thing and then we're going to okay. move on. Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Ultimately, very important. The number one element that you have to confirm that the Earth is flat, in fact, uh, is a is sort of a, not a cash 22, but like a vicious circle where nobody can ever use it. Nobody can ever prove that the Earth is not flat by your number one piece of evidence. Because the argument goes, I can see the boat in the distance because the Earth is flat. When I lose the bottom, it's because of spherical lensing. And when I lose the entire ship, it's because of atmospheric uh, dirt. Distortion, yeah. 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 So your, your number one piece is, is, is circular or just a i guess it's a truism or to, not a truism it's 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 a it's a circular or vicious circle sort of argumentation that no one can ever disprove because you have the we've got the option yeah. but a rather you have an excuse for the for the answer um so we would have to go into outer space in order to actually see okay the okay let's let's do the let's do what my my close second favorite then if you don't mind let's let's do this one because you will you will probably say the same thing about this one which is gravity versus the vacuum of space okay law of thermal dynamics pressure needs a container plain and simple can of hairspray is a hard container basketball soft container or i say flexible container which goes rigid once a pressure once pressure is applied and we're talking about not that much pressure difference between the inside of a basketball and the outside of a basketball in fact if you put a basketball in a vacuum chamber it's going to detonate along with most things you put in a vacuum chamber unless it's a really hard container um so there's only one object, well, two objects that have ever violated this law of thermodynamics. One is the globe, which is the globe doesn't have a container. So if we've got this wispy, loose atmosphere, nitrogen and oxygen and fluorocarbons and helium and, hi and hydrogen, all that stuff. In fact, helium and hydrogen ri rise to the top. Where is the bleeding edge of our atmosphere to the vacuum of space? Well, hold on, hold on, because that's not actually, I don't think that's scientifically accurate. Helium rises not to the top. A balloon will not go into outer space. It will rise to the point where the air or whatever is above it is denser than the helium in the balloon. Okay. So, again, where the where is the bleeding edge of our atmosphere? Well, and, and why? So, I got to cut you off. And, and not, not to cut you off, because I sort of, the first sure. thing you said was uh, the vacuum, which, again, is sort of a scientific term, kind of like... Uh, you know, like constructive dismissal pitched to a non-lawyer, a vacuum pitched to a non-scientist would imply something sucking the air out um, a la uh, space balls. But it's, while a space is a vacuum, it's not a vacuum because something's sucking, it's a vacuum because it's devoid of matter. It because it's devoid of matter, yes. And the scientific explanation for why things stick to the earth, is, despite the suction, is specifically because of gravity. Exactly. Okay, so and that and so and but that's the only explanation. 
in fact, the it's that I throw back on science, which I say they say, well, it's got to be gravity because we're still alive. And that's the only that's the only explanation. I'm going so gravity is so strong that it can fight the massive vacuum power of space. But it's it's, the, it's not a vacuum power of space. That I think is misusing words. It's an app. It's a devoid of matter. It's not a vacuum. And the it, reason why the, why the the reason why matter. I'm not a I'm not a scientist. I read a bunch of. I used to be into black holes in the universe when I was in. Sejep, which is like after high school before sure. university, but the reason why it's the, the, the reason why anything attracts to any mass is because of gravity. The bigger the but the bigger the matter, the stronger the pull. And sure. space itself is not a vacuum that sucks stuff off. It's just an absence of matter. Oh, I know. I, we're, let's let's not. I'm using the word "suck" just for the layman out there. Pressure equalization, molecules versus no molecules, and when and you absolutely when that happens. Molecules versus no molecules. If there is no barrier there, it will equalize. Plain and simple. And it's a question that science will not answer, which is where is the bleeding edge of our atmosphere? Pressure well, needs a well, container. I, I don't know how many times I could say this. Well, no, because it's you're, you're, I think I, I would think that the scientist is going to say it's not pressure. What you're, what, what the, the phenomenon on Earth is not pressure, and so you're mis you're setting up a false premise. Called atmospheric pressure. It's well, it's it's but it's it's created by gravitational pull, which pulls everything into the earth again the and from the earth, the weaker the gravitational force. I don't know what you mean by bleeding edge. Okay, okay, okay. All right, and I, again, I don't want to. I'm I'm trying not to lose your audience. No, right. Right. as as the atmosphere gets thin, yeah, right. as as the atmosphere gets thinner, as we know, we get we go higher up. You go to a mountain, there's less oxygen, and it gets higher and higher, and there's less. Atmosphere at, at let the lighter gases are, are when you get when you get higher and higher, right? So what we're saying is is that pressure needs a container and that gravity isn't nearly strong enough to keep this here, to keep the atmosphere here. And and science says, well, it has to be, because again, we're still alive. And we're saying they, they can't be the, is that that's the only option you have. It can't be that we're in a building and that the reason why you have atmospheric pressure is because you're in a pressurized system literally a pressurized system with walls and a floor and a ceiling that's what that's what we're saying when we're talking about uh sorry i'm trying to trying to form some different thoughts here which i hadn't thought about before we're talking about the vacuum of space or or just a vacuum anyway i i talked to industrial vacuum experts when they were making like uh and it's very very tough to do down here when they're making clean chambers for electronics for example and they say you have no idea what a true vacuum is. It's kind of like a, like a true eclipse. You know, 90, when you get at 90%, you're at nothing. He goes, just to make a vacuum down here, he goes, you, you need three engines. The first engine gets you to about 95%. Then you need a monstrous engine to get you to 99%. He goes, to make a 100% vacuum, we can't even do it physically. He goes, there is not enough horsepower in this world to do it. He goes, you cannot do it. You, you have to use a chemical leaching process just to get that last trace amount to create a 100% vacuum uh, container. He goes, the, he goes when, you, when we're talking about the vacuum of space, the pressure differential is so massive. He goes, the atmosphere should not be there. He goes, the ISS, for example, would just explode. He goes, we're talking about aluminum and plastic. It's not steel. It's aluminum and plastic. He goes, that thing would rupture in two seconds. So why doesn't it? But okay, so, I mean, someone is going to tell you you should not ask the plumber to plumber. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm saying this not to be demeaning, but everyone has their expertise. You should not be asking a plumber to interpret the Constitution, and you should not be asking a lawyer to fix your to fix your your drains. Uh, and so, I, so when I have I, I have people that call me up, engineers that say, "Look, it does." We're not talking about the nine eleven engineers. Well, this is a whole other thing. We're talking about engineers that specialize in this. In fact, we'll, we'll, let's throw one more out there because I know you probably hadn't watched this. No, no, no I don't go for one more until we resolve this one. For, I, don't, for, I think I, some people might say that uh, a building engineer who's talking about creating a vacuum on Earth is not necessarily. A call them a, an astrophysicist who understands what the vacuum of space is because I I suspect they are two entirely different things and so talking about a vacuum to create a vacuum on Earth under under our atmospheric pressure on okay our but, but wait, I got I got I got an argument for you okay so let's say you have a, a, there's another floor above your house and I don't care if there is right now let's say the second floor of your house right now you turned into a vacuum chamber right now so where it's there's devoid of molecules above you right now. You punch a hole in your ceiling. What do you think is going to happen? 
Of course, you know what's going to happen. Uh, well, I'm, I'm telling you, th this is what I think results from creating a, I'll call it a false analogy between the va creating a vacuum on earth and the vacuum of space. The, the vacuum of space, I didn't look, I, 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 th this will be where people are going to go look up the difference between the vacuum of space and why it's different than creating vacuum on earth. Under there the is no difference. There is no difference. It's a vacuum. <laughs> That's all there is. If what's okay, if, if you have a second floor of your house, you punch a hole in the ceiling to the vacuum chamber above you. Why doesn't the gravity keep the air with you right now? Why don't you die? That'll be that'll be a differential of, of, of pressure within a gravitational system within the atmosphere. You're in the, the same gravity. The void of gravity. You're, but I think the mistake, and, and again, you know, people draw their own conclusions. I think yeah. the mistake is probably referring to the void of space as a vacuum in the same sense as creating a vacuum within certain as atmospheric pressure. I think, and I think I, I'll understand the way you think and the conclusions you're drawing right. by virtue of this false analogy of the, if I suck, if I, you know, put my vacuum into my belly, it's going to suck my skin. And that must be how space works. But I, and I suspect that people with the actual technical training uh, would be able to explain why that is. And so oh, you're you're oh, deferring oh, to the men in the lab coats. Well, no, no, I'm, well, I'm referring to the I'm referring to the fact that so astrophys. No, no, this is this is where we run into our problem, which is you're saying the astrophysicists know more than we do, therefore they are correct. Astrophysicists yeah. cannot be wrong. No, 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 cannot I, be wrong. They when they when they come up with stuff like dark matter. No, Mark, you see, this is where you're going. You're throwing in something else. We don't need to go to an imperfect analogy from a perfect example. I know what is required to create a vacuum on Earth. We have those little bell things in in, in, in high school where you right. sucked out and the, you know you didn't hear the bell ringing anymore. That I don't think is a fair analogy to what the void of space is like in terms of the vacuum, the outer the, the difference in pressure versus outer space. I, it doesn't function in the same way, and I can understand why you would come to these conclusions thinking it does. How I, do you how do you know it doesn't function the same way? Well, I, the, the reason why I know it doesn't function this, the same at the very least is because. We are on Earth. With there you go. And we're still alive. There's the argument. No, we're still alive. We're still alive. And I know what is involved in creating a vacuum. Do I even know that there's a vacuum in outer space? I mean, this is where you get into the whole argument. I've never seen it. I haven't been there, so I can't know it myself. Um, and, you know, like uh, for, for all the value I got out of Logan Paul's documentary, he says, I've never seen my brain, but I know it's there. But I don't know if he said brain, actually. Um, Which is a terrible argument. The man, by the way, is a buffoon. He's, well, he's or, one of the worst. He's one of the worst human beings ever, and I'm, this is not me being slanderous. He is horrible. He's an eighth grade kid who got paid to do pranks, and he's 24 now, and he he's he's terrible. I mean, do you, you know what he's famous for? I want to get to this, but but for, we'll we'll close out the vacuum theory. Right. Well, no, no, wait, wait. Let's not close out the vacuum. Let me okay. let me do one more thing, which is because I made a clue on this, which was okay, fine. If you want to you want to back the ISS, you want to back that we're still alive breathing. Which is, there's a question I'm dying to ask an astronaut, which is, how does an astronaut suit work? I'm not talking about the oxygen or heating and cooling or humidity or any of that stuff. I'm saying, how does an astronaut stu suit stop the vacuum of space? What miracle technology stops the law of thermodynamics? And you're saying, you're going to eventually say, well, layers. I'm going, no, 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 my winter coat has layers. All it does is stop the cold. Tell me how an astronaut suit doesn't blow up like a parade float, like the kid from Christmas story. I can't put my arms down. And he just just, just can't move because well, and, 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 at that point. Another, how does it not happen? I don't know if this is called, I mean, so I saw the word in the, te in the, in the comment section, gaslighting. I don't know if this is called gaslighting, but all I know is that this is confounding something that might be difficult to explain to justify a belief that might be itself untenable. So it's not because I can't explain that, that the earth becomes flat. Um, and now, no, the, no, no it, it, I'm not saying that. Help, I'm not saying that proves the Earth is flat, but I'm saying that at the very least, if the astronaut suit cannot function the way it's advertised, then every mission that ever showed that astronaut suit is a lie. And if every everyone that showed it's a lie, well, then we get a big problem with space. Well, but even see, I can even grant you that. But none of this is going to support the idea that the Earth is flat because um, if it weren't the atmosphere would be getting sucked up into outer space because i think that's just I, I'm I, again I, I know i love that argument which is again we're and this is the scientific argument which is i i, fi I figured you would follow anyway which is we're alive because gravity is holding down the atmosphere and that's the only explanation case closed that's it i mean we're, we're alive we have an atmosphere it i don't think the atmosphere is necessarily created by gravity as far as i understand because other planets have gravity but no atmosphere I, I, uh, I, number, yes. the number of other things that create the atmosphere um, yeah. so I don't even think that the, having the atmosphere, I mean, Mark, 
the moon is not being pulled apart despite not having an atmosphere. Forget about oxygen. What, living what, well, we're gonna it's gonna get worse now because what what moon are you talking about? Well, so this is what I need to get to. But first of all, yeah. one person has had an answer the question. I've been seeing it. Milan. The flat Earth map is the azimuthal. As a multiple equidist section of the spherical earth, but that's all it is a projection. Ask Mark this question because I've seen it a few times. I, I want to not forget it. Oh, I mean, what, was the, what was the question? Yeah, no, no, it is a projection. Absolutely. Why do we why do we use it? No, the flat earthers will be first one to tell you there's probably something wrong with that map, but it's the only map we got at the moment because okay. it's what's let me, hypothesize as to what, let me hypothesize as to what might be wrong with that map. Right. Do you agree or do you concede, or how do you explain if I get in a ship and go east? In as much as possible, and at some point, I'm going to get back to my starting position. Oh, come on, that's easy. You know that one. Which is I if know. I move, if my if I move my finger in a circular motion around a dinner plate, technically I've circumnavigated the dinner plate. That True. doesn't make the the dinner plate a ball. No, but you can do if you do it in two directions. It certainly makes it uh, more three dimensional than a dinner plate. If you go the other way, sure. If you're going pole to pole, find find me uh, the pole to pole circumnavigation that happens supposedly happens never. Well, I, you know what? You know, it wouldn't, I'll go one step further. It doesn't have to be pole to pole. It doesn't have to be along the. What's the what's the word? Is it the radius or the diameter? Five times a bit. circumference. Uh, circumference. Whatever. It doesn't have to. You don't. I, if, I'd say if you don't even have to go over the same nano line or across the earth, if you do it in at least off angle from the original line, that'll give you an indication that it's not a dinner plate we're talking about anymore. Yeah, I yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, but in in our case, it works pretty good because again, the compass is at the center, which you know the North Pole. So the compass would work actually pretty much the same. Yeah, you would be making a very slight left hand turn or a very slight right hand turn, but still works. You'd never notice it. Well, it, it, again, it's because the premise, the way you set it up, is such that if you go around that particular thing, yeah, that's how, that's how you circumnavigate that particular issue. But yeah. um. If you go around, let's just say a few degrees up, you're going to go up on one side of it and then down on the other side. And then all of a sudden you're dealing with something that's thicker than dinner plates. Um, okay, so hold on a second. I'll get this question here, uh, Jared. Why are certain star constellations only visible from certain points on Earth? Um, what stars are visible changing depending on where you are on the planet? That's uh, that's is, easy. And I know it's going to get, we're going to start delving into stuff that other people won't like, including some of the flat Earth community. And that is multiple projections. And by that, I mean the stars are instanced. You're talking about. When you go to a planetarium, you only see one projection. The, the, I know I'm, I'm old because I go to planetariums. You I see the, 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 the constellations. Planetarium. But if you were in a planetarium that was 100 miles wide, you would have multiple projections. And what I'm saying here is you, if you had a, a planetarium that was big, you were at one end, your friend's at the other end. You're talking on cell phones. You're saying, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. He says, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion, too. That middle star is blue. You say, no, it's not. It's red. Who's right? You're both right. It's because you're seeing separate projections. That's how we do it in software. We've been doing it for 20 years. Okay, but hold on. Uh, what do you mean by a projection? Meaning, uh, it, again, I don't like using these terms because unless you've done software development, you're not going to get it. Meaning it's instance. You're looking at lights on a ceiling. And if you're in a structure that's big enough, the lights are going to be exclusive to a region. No, for, no, for, no, for no, lack no. of a better term. So yeah. you're going to see, again, you're going to see the belt of a belt of Orion projection from the north or the inner circle and a belt of Orion projection from the south. And so doing star, star constellations, why can't why can't you see the same constellations on the outer rim? That's because you're on the outer rim. Well, it's not okay, hard. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I mean, we'll get to the rim part actually in a bit, obviously, because people are dying to know. But right. uh, you're referring to north and south. Uh, there's really no north and south in the on the flat earth map the a map if it's flat you've got the center and then you've got the outer ring center would be the north because remember what, what where's north south and east and west on a flat map all you've got is a center which i suppose you would call magnetic north but that's just the the only term we've got because it's what we've known for so long okay i'm just reading some of the questions as we go through this but the, um, you, so you're seeing different angles of the of, of you're seeing different uh projections yes. so i see when i see the when the people in the south see a totally different constellation system than the people in the north yes. it's a different project projection yep but you know we can both agree on that it is a different projection because they'll argue people who believe in the earth is round they're a different projection because it's a different object I mean, the the idea the, the, you're saying it's a different projection of the same object. I'm just seeing it differently because of where I am on the Earth. Or you could, or again, or you could do it completely. I, I was using the Belt of Orion just as an example, but if you want to do 
the the southern constellations on the outer rim fine and the northern constellations in the inner circle fine either way it works out the same Again, yeah. so what we, this is what it, we it, do. It, 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 it works out the same. It's the exact same argument, or not, I'm not sure logical fallacy is the right term. It's the exact same argument as uh, with the first piece of evidence, yeah. which is the, the, the boat over the horizon. It can't be beaten. I, I can never disprove this because ultimately nope. we agree on the terms. You're just saying it's a different projection of the same thing. They just look different. And we're saying it's a projection because they're different things. Yes. And because I can't go to them to actually take a piece of matter out of one versus the other, part we can't prove it. It's part of the genius of this place. you got to remember that before, and I know some people are going to argue this, for the longest time, every culture believed that the world was flat. Uh, you don't want to count, don't count the Greeks. I don't even want to get into the Greeks. No, I, everyone, but, everyone thought the earth but, was flat. And, but everyone thought the earth was flat. I'm saying that at some point, whoever built this place introduced the globe, and I said this in the clue, it's very specific about it, where I said introduce the globe model because eventually when you reach a certain technological level, people are gonna, human beings hate confinement and they're gonna look for it. The, the genius of this was telling people there is no fence, there is no outer marker, you can go around all you want, you're not getting off of it. And the globe was there. And even though, remember, we were teaching people about the globe for f at least five centuries without any concrete proof of the globe except for math. That was it. You know what they say? Sticks and shadows. The sticks, sticks and shadows yeah. argument. Boats go over the horizon. Math is a pretty good. Um, is a math is pre sometimes pretty difficult to argue with. It's like it can be, can be, but until but come on, even even the best mathematicians are going to tell you sometimes you need the physical proof, which is. Until you get high enough to see the world as it really is, what do you really know? Well, Mark, okay, so, okay, let's, let, this is a perfect segue. You watched the guy jumping off the... Um, Felix uh, Baumgartner. Yeah, you, you watched him. The Red Bull jump. You, sorry? The Red Bull jump. Yeah, the Red Bull jump. I was yeah. going to... Actually, that was my cue to have a Red Bull, but my wife said not to have a Red Bull while I do this. Um, you saw that. They wouldn't care. Oh, yeah, of course they saw it. And the okay. curvature, the, the fisheye lens that they used on this thing, if the curvature of the Earth, remember, he was only at 120,000 feet. I can send you weather balloon footage like right now, 120,000 feet, flat as a freaking pancake. He's at 130,000 feet. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt, right? And the lens that he used, if the world had that much curvature at 130,000 feet, uh, the world would only be about the size of half of Arizona. Okay, but so it be that small. This is where, again, I mean, it, it's it, Mark. Do you believe? Do you believe when you see that it was a great media shot? Which is, do you believe the curvature of the Earth at 130,000 feet was that severe? Well, no, I, I, I acknowledge that I, if he's using a GoPro, it has a fisheye filter or a fisheye lens. What are we talking about? The, well, because there are ways of correcting it, wherein you will still. So why didn't he correct? Um, well, you cor because you obviously correct a fisheye filter is a distortion of reality, whereas once you can correct that, there will still. <laughs> curvature but, but, did it, did, why didn't he correct it why didn't well, he first of all, why did he because he's got the, the gopro as a function is has a dedicated yeah, they didn't correct it because they wanted to make his altitude see even more exaggerated no, if you go up there and they show it perfectly flat it's like oh, okay fine i've seen that from an airplane but at 130,000 feet if you make it so severe it's like holy and he's wearing an astronaut suit which he's not he looks like an astronaut and they're going oh well, obviously he's jumping from space the average person bought it as like he must be jumping from a hundred miles up. No, he was at one hundred thirty thousand feet. Well, so. I mean, look, first of all, I, I don't think I, well, I. This is an interesting thing which neither can be proven nor disproven. Right. Why they did it? The fact is that's what a GoPro does. Right. Should he have gone up there with a let's just say a Nikon fourteen twenty four lens which doesn't have distortion to show that the curvature would be less exaggerated than with a fisheye lens? I don't know that he's jumping with a Nikon. Maybe he could have done it. Did they do it for dramatic effect? I don't yes. think so. It has, it has a dramatic effect, there's no question. But the issue then would be another one where, unless you do it, uh, and, and but then even if you see it, what you're gonna say, what you'll end up saying is that it's a question of perspective or there'll be some sort of, I won't say atmospheric, uh, what was it, atmospheric, atmospheric, atmospheric lensing, lensing yeah. with when you're on the ground, but there'll be some other explanation as to it's the shape of your eye or I mean. Do it, you it, think, it, have, okay, look, no, uh, let, me, let me get into some Orwellian stuff for you because I've heard this from so many people, which is I have seen the curvature of the earth from fill in the blank here. I have seen it from a plane. I have seen it from a balloon. I have seen it from an from an, a mountaintop. And I've even had people say, I can see the curvature of the earth from the beach. There's a problem with that. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the most popular physicist and scientist in the world has come out and says, you cannot see the curvature from anywhere. No civilian has ever seen the curvature ever, ever, ever. So the question is when, if you, and I put this challenge out to people, I say, look, people say, oh, I see it. Have you ever been in an airplane, stupid? It's like, fine, take a shot from your airplane window, put it on your laptop, 
put a straight edge up to it. Tell me if it's still curved. If it is, send it to me. I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. Four years. Nobody's sent anything. Unless you want to count the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge, which is absolutely ridiculous. Apparently, the world is only 50 miles wide. Okay, well, I'll, I'll check the... I, I have not... Um... I didn't get a, you know, we didn't do requests. No, 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 it's okay. We, okay. I know we haven't prepped this. I've seen it from an airplane. I believe I've seen it. Have you? The, the, Again, the, Orwellian, did you see it? And I will come back and say, no, you, you didn't see it. You wanted to see it. And there's a big difference there. Did you see four lights or did you see five? You win. And I can't, I can't overstate this. You put a globe in the classroom at six years old, literally right next to an American flag. And you make it through high school, we'll say, right? That's 12 years of conditioning to the point where people will fight for the American flag and they will absolutely fight for the globe because they are told this without even words, which is, this is your home. This is where you live. This is where you live every day, every month, every year until you graduate. Mark, that I is the reinforcement. That is why it's so polarized. That's why some people in your chat room are losing their minds right now. Yeah, no, look, I don't, well, I'm, I'm reading it. They're, they look, they look okay. I mean, some but, of for the, but in their head, they're going, "Why? Why are we talking about this?" It's some of them are going to have a wait, 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 wait. I, I got to get this out. Let me get this yeah. out. Which is, there's a, you'll, you'll appreciate this. There's a great George Orwell line. In fact, this is from a legal standpoint. This might actually work. George Orwell said, uh, 1946. He said. Uh, he goes, and he wasn't a flat earther, but he said he was talking about how science, the responsibility of science, because people will believe whatever science says. He goes, you go to anyone on the street and you ask them how they know the earth is a globe. They'll say, what are you talking about? We know it's a globe. It's a given, like, like math, right? It's a given. We know this. And then you say, yeah, but how do you know? Then they start getting angry. No, but Mark, the question, the question is, no, no, no. how Matt, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How in 1946 did everybody know that it was a globe? It wasn't that they knew, it was because they were told. They were told this generation after generation, Mark, father, it, son. It, it, but this is this is getting into a certain, well, it's getting into a sermon about, you know, how people, I, I don't care. First of all. Well, you should care. Oh, no, I know, I know why I believe it. I know the, the explanations for which I believe it. I understand now the ways which you say I don't believe it. I understand it. Yeah. We'll never agree with it because I think you're set, you, because like I said, you set up a premise that you can't be proven wrong because of the premises you've set up. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to the, I forget his name now, the jumping out of the Red Bull jump. Bumgarner. Even if we correct, I mean, there's ways to correct the fisheye lens. But he didn't. Um, well, you know, he didn't. But I'll, 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 his, his marketing people. team didn't. But but if somebody does, I'm not in asking. And the media, and the media didn't comment it on it either. Well, it there are, there right. are, media, the media is not going to comment. It. It's not their obligation to. Their absence of commenting on it is not an evidence that the earth is No, no, no. But, but if it's more dramatic, they're going to go with it. They knew any photographer of the media knows that that lens was absolutely skewed. But they're not going to correct it, nor are they going to mention it. It's like, well, you know what? They'll, they'll be the internet challenge. Someone, but you will not accept the, the – because you have digital ways of correcting a fisheye a fish lens. Sure. Someone's going to do it. It's not going to be me. But when someone does it, you're going to have an explanation as to why that curve is either perceived or why it looks that way uh, or why it's not a curve to begin with or why there's a problem with the correction process. I suspect. I mean, so I don't, I don't if, if somebody done. corrects the Felix Bumgarner, if we, and we have, it comes down to who's correcting it. How much, how much when you're correcting it, how much do you straighten it out? Do you leave a little bit of curve in at that point? And who's being, are, are they being objective when they're doing it? How much curve do you take out of that lens shot? Anyway. Well, no, but and then that's I'm, I'm looking. Uh, I'm just looking at some of the questions. But that, I agree. You're going to say the objectivity of the person, the objective, and that's going to be the out, which is why ultimately these arguments. We're, we might get to this later, but they're I, I don't think they're scientific. Actually, I think. Why, they, why, okay, let's let's jump to another one uh, real quick, which would yeah. be uh, the Tesla thing. Since you were fond of the the Felix Baumgartner thing, you must have just loved the Tesla thing. Car in space, convertible in space. Buy it, bought it. Absolutely real. Absolutely one hundred percent legit. Well, Nothing wrong I, with that car at all. Well, I, I first of all, I didn't. Uh, not that I didn't buy it or did buy it. I didn't care about it. But uh, I mean, I'll, I'll hear you out on it. But I think okay. it's the same thing as the the bomb. The car. impossible car. Uh, how many things can I point out wrong with that car in space? Oh no. How about oh geez, the heating and cooling negative two hundred something degrees to positive two hundred degrees. You know when you're in the in the sunlight or in the sunshade, the side windows would have spider webbed and shattered immediately. The front window would have spider webbed, maybe went out, would have blown apart. Every pressurized system in that car, battery fluid, window washer fluid, brake fluid, pressurized systems exposed to a vacuum would have burst, would have frozen, would have been awful, would have been everywhere. You know what, Mark? Mark, you know what? It, let's let's just we'll, we'll move off of that. It's a publicity stunt. Whatever. It's a so if it's a publicity stunt, then why then why why put it out there as the absolute well, truth? I don't think that was put out there as evidence to prove that the Earth is round. Why? No, no. Why put it out there? You can't. Oh. 
can't just show people a car in space say yep there's my car in space and then never reel it back in come on and then oh yeah it's going to mars with no logos on that car at all it's like he was almost embarrassed it was like they were trying to fake space on the cheap to see if they could get away with it in social media it killed me yeah, well, it was yeah. absolutely the worst not to mention not to mention the booster rocket that put it up there that supposedly opened up never fell off into frame they had three different cameras it's like what put it up there oh no we're gonna show the rockets landing right next to each other which would never ever done in a million years plus it was on kennedy space center which they're not friends with tesla they're not friends with spacex they're direct competition oh sorry i could, I could spend two hours on for well no but, but you know what but i think that's part of the i mean i think that's part of the problem because you this type of argument which might be legitimate against that picture or you know for example the moon landing where there might be oh like, you want to get into the moon landing or like but this is this is where i think the part of the uh, no, I don't want to say indoctrination, but this is where part of the evidence is is uh, imp it, it, sort of imparting or imposing some of the legitimate criticisms of other stuff to then support your theory. That 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 pi that picture is neither here nor there as far as going proving that the Earth is flat. Oh, it is. It is to us though, because remember we we and I know from a legal standpoint, it probably drives you nuts. We come at it from a shotgun pattern approach, which is why, like when uh, I don't know, you probably didn't see it when there were. For example, I'll give you the Georgetown University guy. Um, we do not get a chance to argue with physicists very often. There was a physicist from Georgetown University set up by a German television team. He said, and they said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to record five questions from you. We're going to put it on video. We're going to send it to him. That way you're not talking over each other. He's going to record the answers. I gave him five questions. They were just a shotgun pattern approach. Uh, um, the vacuum of space, long distance photography, uh, the eclipse shadow, the temperature of the moon, and the Van Allen radiation belts. And he folded like a card table. That was it. He was like, nope, not doing this because what you just said there. I mean, yes, it's all the little things. It's kind of like mechanics, what they do to you at a body shop. It's like, well, there's a lot of little things that are wrong with the car. You have enough little things, they really, really add up. And well, well, I, I think with the O'Reilly, there was a guy who I think posted a response to those five points on YouTube. Of course they did. Okay. They had to. It was no. There was but why didn't the Georgetown physicist do it? Why didn't he? Why didn't he do it? I, I don't see, care. But if you took guy post his response, I don't care anymore. Okay. Give so me a now, this is where, but this is where it becomes, uh, where the evidence becomes one of intentions of the interlocutor. Like, and an interesting strategy for anybody watching is you you want to undermine uh, the, the Degrassi Tyson uh, because he's not credible, but then you also want to invoke his authority to say that nobody can see the Earth is flat. Yep. Which is which is classic arguing from conclusions and not towards them, which is then using as an authority one person who you discredited because of their lack of authority. Yep, um, it works. No, so if I, I'm going to look for some more questions. Everyone hit, hit up the questions if I've missed something. But uh, in the flat Earth theory, in the flat Earth model, what right. things, why, why are we pulled to the ground? Oh, why? I think it's gravity. No, no, I believe. Look, in fact, uh, again, I, let's let's use the Neil deGrasse. I, I, you know what? Forget about Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, main, yeah. main, mainstream <laughs> science will tell you that gra they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. They can only tell you the symptoms of it because they can't replicate it in an independent field, they, which is fine. Uh, they say it's this magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of the earth. And from my standpoint, and there's other people in the flat earth community which will argue the density thing, but I don't care, which is in mine, because look, we do this in simulations all the time. It's called a physics engines. Gravity is a magical molecular force that just pulls things straight down. No difference. In fact, very, very little difference with the exception is mainstream says it's the core of the earth and I say it's straight down into whatever landmass this is that we can't define because look, you can't drill past eight miles anyway. Um, okay, now hold on a second. So Lunar I think gravity is real. That's the short version. I know people ask that all the time. Well, no, I'm gonna, well I'll get to it because when I get back to the edge, but uh, Jeremy Anthony, lunar eclipses, <laughs> lunar eclipses from different viewpoints on earth is always curved, proving the spheric model. Why can't Flat earthers, where I just lost a question, uh, provide a working model. For what? The lunar eclipse? For the lunar, to, yeah, to explain why the lunar eclipse. Come on. It, and I know it, it's not it's not a cop out when I say this. Look, we can create a lunar eclipse in a planetarium right now. We, we have been since the 70s. This is not hard to do. We can create a blood moon. We can create a lunar eclipse. We, we can't do a solar eclipse very well right now because of the lumens. We just don't have that tech, although our OLED tech is, is getting better. In fact, there, in fact uh, uh, real quick, uh, for anyone who wants to look this up, look up a company called Colux that can put a skylight in your bedroom with a simulated sun and a blue sky that's absolutely identical to the real thing to where it will follow you with perspective. And they've been able to do this since uh, 2014. Um, so actually, while we're talking about the moon now, um, the moon, why do you, what, is the moon round or is the moon the same spherical shape as the earth with the same dome? No, is, is no, 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 
Is it, the moon two dimensional or three dimensional? Is the moon a globe, uh, or is it a? It, is it, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, all I can tell you is I, it, not for sure. I can all I can tell you is the the sun generates an incandescent light, and the moon generates a cool LED light. And by that, I mean a refrigerant light. I challenge anyone to test this. You can buy a twenty dollar point and click thermometer at a hardware store. Uh, the moon light generates it, it cools things down meaning uh we all know it's 90 degrees in the sunlight and 80 degrees in the shade right well if you're 50 degrees in the moonlight it's actually 60 degrees in the moon shade up to like a 13 degree swing i didn't even believe when i saw it uh now does that prove a flat earth no it doesn't but it absolutely blows away any relationship between the sun and the moon well hold on I, I actually not to get into that but i believe the cool light which i maybe heard something about is scientifically Inaccurate, but again, not it. Uh, we, we can test this all. Uh, there's videos. Mark, 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 part of the problem might be doing homemade experiments with twenty dollar, uh, uh, you know, Home Depot uh, thermometers as opposed to actually scientifically appropriate equipment. But again, it's a side issue because I think this is like another one where you say the the cooling effect of the moon's light, which is actually just slower, whatever. It's a side issue which then is confusing to or can be used to confound the issues. Or create suspicion. Yep. Or or just or just or just. Let, 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 let me. Let me. You're absolutely right. Okay. In a legal, uh, and I know I'm going to butcher the legal terms here, but but let me throw this at you. The reason why flat Earth is getting has gotten so big and so weird and and everywhere, and why it doesn't care about uh, how rich you are, powerful. We we get into just about every demographic you can think of, which is weird. Isn't because can I prove the flat Earth to you right now? Nope. Nope. I can't. I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe. That by the time I'm done, for the average person, not you, you're a pillar, uh, which is by the time I'm done, <laughs> the, <laughs> there's no place left for you to turn except for some sort of flat earth model. Whatever that whatever that flat earth model is, dome or no dome or lands beyond or however the continents are laid out. Everyone that tries to go back to the globe can't. It is classic red bill, pill, uh, blue pill. But again, can I prove it? Nope. But again, it come, for us, it comes down to reasonable doubt. That's all we need. And that's why it works. Um, what was the question I was going to ask? Okay, let's get. I mean, getting, getting to the edges of the of the of the flat Earth. I mean, what right. what what happens when you hit the wall of the of the tree? <laughs> Barney, the dog barks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch of dogs. The um, so, and and by the way, that I'm glad you asked that because so many people get stuck on space that that the edge that this this disc flying through space. It's like who told you there was space? In the first place, like if you're in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, that building could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be space. So there's no cosmic waterfall. And I know the Thor movies completely screwed that up. Damn Asgard with all their cosmic waterfalls. I, I haven't, I haven't seen the Thor movies. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, don't. No, I mean they're fine. I mean it's good. Marvel universe is is fine. Uh, but anyway, so when you get out to Antarctica, the edge of the world, right? People think, okay, well the Antarctic coastline is the edge of the world. No, no, no. What we're saying is the United States military and the Soviets figured out that Antarctica was much, much, much larger than we thought. Meaning the Antarctic coastline, by the time you get from that point to the edge of the world, wherever the edge, and by that, we're just saying the wall of the world, where wherever that thing is, uh, is probably thousands of miles. Thousands, because they were looking for the better part of 30 years, Admiral Byrd. And whatever's out there, take your pick, whatever it's made out of. People say, well, what is it? It's like, I don't know, it's a soft barrier, it's a hard barrier, it's a heavy element, heavy metal, force field, unified field, high frequency, I don't know. Whatever it is, we can't get through it. That's why the United States and Soviet Union were trying to punch through it for four years with atomic weapons. Could not do it, not even close. And probably didn't help matters by firing weapons in an enclosed structure for all those years. And then they gave up simultaneously. So, sorry, that's the answer to the question. We don't know what's out there, but it's but it's not the edge. The uh, what I, But point is, it's the, the edge is not the Antarctic coastline. It is way, 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 way in, which is why the Antarctic Treaty was put into place. Incidentally, this is sort of the, one of the questions I was more reluctant to ask just because I knew what your answer is going to be because it's going to be the same thing as what, when you ask someone what happens when you get to the edge of the universe, what's what? happening at the edge of the universe. So, I mean, what, I, what universe? I mean, remember, if this place, I'm not saying, and I don't want to get into the biblical side of things because people say, well, you're saying that God is lying. This is, this is a big deception. I'm going, no, it's a test. If 99.999% of the population believe in the illusion, that's what you go with. Something Carl Sagan said, which is like, wow, the universe is a lot of wasted space. It just seems like there's huge tracks of nothingness. It's like, yeah, it's because it's not real. It's just an illusion. It's to give the impression that it's very, very vast. And it inspires the imagination. Hey, great, fantastic. But it's still an illusion. Okay, but uh, you know, now I sort of think I do have to get back to the moon. Do, you re you rec do we recognize that the moon is round, if but not necessarily spherical? 
or you just don't at least at never... least round not sure if it's spher spherical definitely okay. cannot land on it and no and and i know it's a, lit a litmus test for some people out there which is where we throw it out there it's like do you believe absolutely 100 that the apollo program was real now forget forget that i don't even want to get into that the earth is round but you can't tell if it's spherical um and then how would you account for the different shadows on the moon or the curved shadows on the moon or the, or the curved shadows, shadows on the moon we look we can we can make curved shadows on the moon it's well, not it's not but, tough i'm sorry whoever built this can put we had nothing to do with this just so you know we did not build this place curved shadows on the moon are no different than a planetarium we can do waxing and waning crescents and all the other fun stuff well, okay, hold on hold on sorry they yeah. are different than a planetarium because we built the planetarium are you saying that whoever built the cosmos is creating a fake curve on the moon to trick us yes okay yeah. Well, I and, and not, even, not, even necessarily, not even necessarily a trick. It's just an interpretation on our part. Okay, but, but so Mark, you realize I'll never be able to, the, no one will ever be able to convince you. And I don't say that you sh they have to. If the bottom line is I see it, but it's an illusion intended to deceive. It's not intended. Rather, it is either intended to deceive or it's just deceptive. But I see the curved shadow on the moon and I disregard it to prove that the earth is actually spherical. Because we can make it here, yes. If we couldn't make it here, if we had no technology available to us that could simulate this, then I'd be like, oh, wow, I don't know. But come on, we, we've been able to do this for a long time now. Uh, long is relative, 40 years, at least, 50. Yeah, but Mark, I, I don't think the criteria of some of an explanation is our ability to replicate it here. I mean, I also think that that's neither here nor there, but the, bo the bottom line is, Oh, it very well is here or there, though, because especially if you get into the whole quantum mechanics and like uh, the double slit experiment, for Matt, example. Yes. Why for? No, I got to stop you because like this is another. Let's go stick with the moon. Because oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, we agree that the moon is round because I can. I I have a telephoto lens and I've taken a picture of it. It's round. I can see shadows on the moon. And round, I like round, round, round or spherical? You think it's? Well, oh, it's it's perfectly round when I take it with my lens. It's I can conclude that it's spherical because of the curved shadows on the moon and because that one side is darker than the other sometimes. Right. If, if, I, you I, take, I, if you I take your camera to a planetarium and you can see the moon of if I, I've gotten this argument from astronomers all day long, which is if you if you take a camera to a planetarium, you take and it's like I can see Jupiter and I go fine. Can you see Jupiter in a planetarium? Yes I can. Does it look spherical? Yes it does. And they go and they go, yeah, but I'm in a building. I'm going, who's to say when you didn't walk out of that building, you're just walking into a much bigger one? Yeah, okay, but you see, and this is I think just, fact, why, yeah. what why what what staggers me, and I'm, I'm not picking on you, is that with all because this is something this is not a new concept. This is something that we've talked about in science fiction for forever, which is you know, the possibility that we are in, you know, some a snow globe on some guy's desk on a, la on a lab laboratory desk. So if all those great science fiction stories, didn't you think it would be kind of like lottery tickets? Do you think that one of them might actually be true? We've covered the gamut of possibilities of what this world could be. What if one of them was true just because it doesn't agree with mainstream science? Does that make it less true? No, but I look, but, but the, the, what if, and, and are we living in a, I mean, I think it was Elon Musk that floated the idea of living in a simulator. There are certain what ifs that you will never be able to definitively prove or disprove. Do I even exist? But observational evidence, if if what the bottom line is, I'm going to take the observational evidence and say I'm disregarding it because who knows? It could be. The, I mean, it could be. Then, yeah, then I agree. We'll, 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 no one will ever convince you because you're unconvincible or you are unable to be convinced otherwise. But um, faced, with the, faced with observational sort of tangible evidence, 100 years ago, I don't think I was able to take uh, a, such a detailed picture of the moon from my roof with uh, with a 400 millimeter telephoto lens. Right. And I can do it, and I can see with my own eyes and on paper difference in shadows. Not just that it's round from the picture, but mm -hmm. it's round because of the shade, because of the shadow, because I know how light works. Who knows? Maybe it's a projection. Maybe, yeah, I, could, I mean, nobody could disagree with that. So if that's if that's but, the discussion, sort of that, that's okay. The the one thing you're leaving out there is you're you're going off of previous observational evidence, and we are digging up and rewriting all the other observational evidence recently. Meaning over the last three, four years, we've been coming up with our own, which is, look, we think there are breadcrumbs. And you're saying, well, it can never be proven. I'm going, I, I disagree. I say that there's clues out there. There are breadcrumbs out there that all lead towards the same thing. Look, if any one of these things, I, if I, I said this when I was making the clues, like I said, if I find a clue that goes completely in the other direction on the flat earth, I will walk away from flat earth. I don't want to do flat earth. I hate flat earth some days. I hate it. Everybody hates it. So why can't why is so why are so many people in it? Why are so many people talking about it? Well, so here's here's my my personal theory. I, I do believe that this is more akin to a religion or a philosophy, and in a non-judgmental sense, because I'll, I'll explain oh, to you, and then you can tell me because you know who the followers are. Right. It, 
it's a, either a more of a religion or a philosophy in the sense that it is people who want to critically question everything from the most concrete observational evidence to other more uh, sure and, 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 and so and so and it's why a, not it's a frame of so, mind. So, social media has changed that game in that regards. It's like, look, we all know there's conspiracies out there, right? It's just a question of what lies you're willing to buy into and what lies you're not. I mean, everybody knows in business and politics and sports and entertainment and journalism, and even science, there's conspiracies every day, really, really bad ones. So, and social media has now put those out there to where if you want to dig, you want to go into rabbit holes, there's a whole bunch of rabbit holes. And this yeah, no, no, but, but ultimately, I think, I think that's why the call it a litmus test, but I think the flat earth is sort of the litmus test for the people with that frame of mind yeah. who who want to take other more justifiable examples and then apply the same thinking. But this is sort of like, you know, this is the statement. It's sort of like, a, it's sort of like a religious statement. It's sort of like wearing a, you know, a cross to show what fundamental core beliefs you have right. in order to then uh, know with the group with whom you stand for this sort of, which is which sort of what I think this is ultimately looks like from an outside observer. Sure. Um, is it comes down to some form of faith or fundamental, actually probably the exact opposite of faith, fundamental skepticism um, to justify this fundamental skepticism in all aspects of life. But you have to start with the most shocking one in order to make the statement that this is what I believe and this is how I view the world. That That is true. Um, what I try to call it, and it's, it's, it, it was interesting that a lot of people, I, I joked about this in the first clue I did, which is I literally knew people that would tell me that the entire royal family is made out of lizards. And when I told them, yeah, what about, what about flat earth? I don't get the hell out of here. I mean, they would literally just dismiss me, even though they believed in things that I thought were were more shocking at the time. Yeah, but you, and, and they believe in it, Mark. Try to prove to them that the royal family is not made out of lizards. I mean, I've never touched the royal family. And then even if I do touch them and feel that they're human flesh, I'll say, well, it's a very, it's a very uh, sophisticated lizard design. I mean, there are people that, that of course, believe in, in everything. And I do, again, what I to your listeners, I, I put forth, forth the same thing. It's like, look, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not even really here to persuade you. I'm just here to plant the seed and say, look, don't believe what I'm talking. You know, don't do your own research. That's how everybody gets into it. It's like, in fact, I, I go the other way. I go the other way, which is, you know what? If you like your life the way it is, if you think you got a good bead on things, things are, you wake up every day. It's like, everything is awesome. Thumbs up. Don't look into flat earth. And I know that's reverse psychology, but it's true. Don't do it because everyone that does it, it's a trap. Once you get in, you're you you all of a sudden become because once you do it, it becomes the ultimate op, ultimate open minded experience, and then everything then you revisit everything else that you've ever well, even thought okay. about. And just so nobody thinks that I, I this was not an invitation to I mean I didn't this I don't want to consider this like an invitation to plant a seed or anything. I, this was a discussion. I don't think it, it was not a question of planting a seed. It was a question of actually just understanding. Oh, I know, I know. Now, I, I fundamentally understand your arguments. I understand where we will, we're, you know, 99% of people are going to disagree on the factual evidence of those arguments. And ultimately, I think- Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 no, I got to stop you there. Where'd you come up with 99%? Well, I think because the three arguments, I know where we're going to end. The, the, the curvature of the earth in terms of the explanation for the number one piece of evidence, I know where we're going to ultimately disagree. Right. Um, on, on, the curve, on the moon, I mean, I know we're going to disagree now. How do I know it's not an illusion? I don't know that oh, any- Okay, okay, okay. And so, and that's what I mean. Like, I understand your arguments; they're interesting. I mean, I think it's sort of it, it, it's the Zenonian paradox in a sense, where you're saying like the arrow in flight is is always at rest. Um, and you know, that's it's it's a fun intellectual game to sharpen your critical thinking. But I, sh the arrow, by the time you finish your argument, is in the bullseye, and it's in motion. So, regardless of the, whether what amazingly tricky intellectual arguments you can raise to try to prove that the arrow in flight is always at rest, right. it's not. Um, and I think what you're, and I ultimately now having listened, having listened and talked with you, yeah. it's an intellectual exercise. Um, I think it's one that doesn't actually have an end game because of the, not the circular reasoning, but because of the, the, um, the people, people. Yeah, I know what you mean, but people love a mystery. And so the, you're right. There is, a, that's why we're looking for it. Well, you know, actually, you said that people love a mystery and it triggered something that I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget. Yeah which is another one of my things in this is I question whether or not this is um, this is being treated as something like a, not a fantasy ride for adults, but things where people who may not necessarily believe the earth is flat, but get into the movement because of everything else that it entails, um, which is where I think, which is sort of where I think it goes in terms of the people who are leading this. Who's the guy, um, I don't know if he's Canadian, but the guy in 
Um, Canada. Logan Paul's documentary. Rob, David Roberts. Oh, Robbie Davidson. Yeah. Robbie Davidson. Yeah. Um, okay. Do they give cruises to the purported edge? Oh my God. I, no, no, it's, no. I'm glad you asked that, by the way, because there, that shows you, by the way, how things have changed. It used to be that the media had to uh, do follow up references and they had to make sure that, you know, when, if you're going to, if you're media and you wanted to steal from another person, usually called up that paper and said, Hey, can I use your by, you know, byline? Can I use your article? Nowadays, they don't care anymore. If there's three or four people that already did it. So what happened was the 20, so the, the U S conference this year was in Dallas and next year's was going to be out of Miami on a boat. And somebody wrote a story kind of joking. It's like, oh, if they're on a boat, they should take it to the edge of the world, right? And they just mentioned that in passing. And I don't remember what the headline was, but it kind of alluded to that. And then somebody else picked up on the headline. Next thing you know, there are 20 different uh, media outlets running that were taking an expedition to the edge of the world. Logan Paul's in on it. And uh, and who else was? Oh, and they're going to, it's part of a documentary out of London. None of those things are true. No, that's, no, no, no. That's, exactly. that's fine. I, I was expecting another answer if it were true that it was sort of like we get to the edge and we say we can't go any further because no, what, you wouldn't get, you're not going to put a cruise ship anywhere near icebergs. Are you kidding me? That's okay, why they have icebreakers. This is a much simpler, more direct answer. But let me get one question that I see Jared P is asking. Yeah. And it actually reminds me of what I want to ask one of, one of the questions as well. I'm going to go through my list and make sure I hit all that. Do you think the U.S., Russia, Japan and the space exploration are all launching satellites orbiting the Earth, pushing the same theories and views of Earth? So. More generally speaking, what is what is the, the rationale to propagate this conspiracy that the Earth is round? The easy one, I'll, I'll use the cliche one, which is power control. Uh, and that is, think of it this way. If you're pushing the globe model for five centuries at least, and then all of a sudden there is a chance that it's not, do you tell the public? And by that, I mean, think of the three things. About, I'll, I'll rattle them off real quick. Three things that will happen which uh three tiers uh one would be academic one would be economic one would be religious academically uh astrophysics and astronomy would be devastated overnight the remaining physical sciences i don't care geology hydrology archaeology biology any any physical sciences have to be retooled literally from the ground up um economically and you know this you would have to you would have to suspend world markets for months to try to figure out where the dust settles. I mean, if Donald Trump caught pneumonia tomorrow, the market would react. That's one guy. You all of a sudden throw this paradigm in the mix, oh, it'd be it'd be devastating. Uh, but the bigger one, the biggest one, would be the religious side, which is why would you keep this thing a secret? Well, the 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 five major religious houses: uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, Islam, Christianity. You're all of a sudden giving all of them simultaneously leverage against science, and and you you think they're going to act with some restraint? I don't think anyone's going to take that. It's like, because all of a sudden, it, because it doesn't stop there. It's like, okay, so you were wrong about the globe. What else are you wrong about? Uh, evolution, the big bang theory, dark matter. We should revisit these. And all of a sudden science is on the ropes. It's a dangerous time. And so I don't blame them. I trust me when I say this, I, I, I try to put myself in other people's shoes. I'm a big believer in empathy, which is, do I think it was the government's, it was the right decision when they figured this out in about 1960 to not tell the public? Yeah. I, I do. The, the meeting was short. It was like, look, we can't do this until we figure out a way to roll this out to the people. Now, it seems, because we seem to be getting their help in most cases, the biggest corp in the race, corporation in the world, Google, I think they're the biggest anyway, um, they, they've they been doing nothing but help us for the last, for at least three years. And only lately, they've been putting, putting the brakes on us, which is once they roll it out to the population, now you can get everybody on the same page. You've got high-speed internet, social media, and six billion smartphones. It's a perfect time to release this. I think it's going to. I think it's gonna come out eventually. Um, okay, one, one. Let me ask one question that I want to make sure. Um, okay. w you believe in gravity? Why isn't the moon falling into the Earth? <laughs> Again, everyone gets stuck on the space paradigm, which is why. What moon? What? What? What object? What? If the uh, if the moon is only less than fifty miles wide, what's it gonna do? It's not hard to keep that thing up there if it's three dimensional at all. It may only be a two dimensional spotlight for what we, all we know, or a, a reflection of another projection device. Don't know. The moon's not crashing anything. It's not a two thousand mile wide object. That's again, people kind of like the time zone thing. It's like, well, how is the whole world not lit up at the same time? I'm going because you're thinking of the sun as a four hundred thousand mile wide object which it's not. It's this tiny, tiny little light. And it works not just in computer simulations. It works in a physical model. We've done, made tons and tons of physical models where if you have a tiny, tiny pinpoint of light, it only shines up that area. 
Yeah, but see, but the, and and I mean, Mark, I, I can answer the question for you. For me, if the moon is only fifty miles wide, how do you right. explain the tides? And then the answer is going to be uh, that's just the projection. That's just the no, way. no, 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 not at all. The the what? Uh, okay, and I know I'm, I'm look when I when I started doing this as a thought experiment, I had to put my self in the in the mindset of whoever built this place i had to basically I, i'm not gonna say I, I had to be in the mind of god because i think the god's actually bigger than this i think he actually subcontracted out the work and that is when you're building something in a sandbox like this you don't create a gravitational directional force from the moon you create that you do the tides from below you you use whatever gravitational force you're using down below you use that for the tides as well it makes it much much more efficient you don't put a directional gravitational field around a 50 mile wide object you just don't do it sorry that's okay. how i would build it and so but but then and that's how we build it in physics engines here when we do things we do simulations with the tide we don't put the tide forces connected to the moon the moon of course it, remember the, the sky the, the stars and the the planets and the moon and the sun are just some giant clock system if the moon sinks up with the tides hey great that's fantastic doesn't mean the moon's causing the tides okay so no explanation for what actually causes the tides or yeah gravity Grav uh, uh directional gravitational force you just do it from down below if gravity is artificial then the tides are a easy easy uh, deviation from that okay let me let me get one question here i'm going to get to the questions that uh, Ian sent me by text i didn't realize there were a bunch there uh oh yeah okay earth is flat why is it light why, where does the sun go at night i mean oh, God. goes off into the distance look up flat earth sun sunrise sunset on youtube uh, the, the short version is between the atmosphere and it just going off in the distance. Remember, it's super, super oh, tiny. It what just is, go what, is, sorry, what is going off into the distance? This, oh, this, the, the light source that is the sun. Remember, if it's super, super small, then it just goes off in the distance. It's still very, very bright, but that's all it does. It goes off as in the light ceases to project light or the sun itself moves away and goes It, it moves away. The sun. Yeah, the sun physically moves. But and I know I'm kind of sorry. I'm getting text too. The um, uh, the sun and the moon are traveling around us. I know you haven't really looked at the model that much. I mean, you maybe glanced at it. The sun and moon are moving around us like a mobile uh, uh, above a child's crib. Only most of the models show the sun as thousands of miles wide. The moon is thousands of miles wide. But that's only done for graphical illustrations. In reality, they're super super tiny. Remember, if you look at the map and you take like a fifty mile chunk, that's tiny. It's a pin. It's a pinprick. Um, okay, now I'm just going to think scientifically here. If the sun is smaller than science says it is, right. it's going to have to be hotter than science says it is? Oh, boy. Here we go into the heat thing. Not all of the I, I, I have. I, I did no, not no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Trust me. I, I answer these questions all the time. Uh, the heat, for this world, uh, if it's a, an enclosed building, all the heat sources are aren't going to come from one thing kind of like okay so if the moon is not a, a, a directional gravitational directional field that's controlling the tides the sun yeah it generates heat sure but it doesn't generate all the heat that we need down here the rest of it's going to come from the jet stream which is just a uh, giant air conditioning system the underwater conveyor system which is down uh, in the oceans which also transfers massive amounts of energy and then of course the magma system below that the combination of all those handles our heat needs, but the sun is not the exclusive heat energy source. Okay, now good questions though, because I I don't know I I don't actually get that one that much. Well, no, I mean because it's it's only logical. I mean I do notice. No, no, no that's good. The sun goes away. I don't I don't know that the uh, could the ocean ocean belts are responsible for the change of the seasons, but um. No, 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 no. The sea. Okay, so the sun. No, the seasons is a completely different question, meaning the sun doesn't keep the same track, obviously. Uh, doesn't keep the same track around this thing. So it's kind of, again, dates me, needle on a record player. You know, So the needle, as the song's playing, goes in, uh, and then if you reverse it, it would go out. So the sun and the moon take different tracks, slightly different every single day. Um, okay, Judas Scott wants me to ask about the volcanoes, but I think I know what your answer is going to be. I mean, uh, I'm not even sure. Yeah, it's, it's the, the least favorite of, of, of anything because no one can imagine it. And that is, look, it's a magma system. And people say, well, if it's a magma system, it's got to be organic. And I said, why would you make anything organic in this world? If this world was built, then everything is artificial. Absolutely everything. You're going to have a, a, a special terrarium for your pet lizard. And you're going to have a, a light bulb and a water thing and a little fan. You're not going to make an artificial heating system. Or you're not going to do an organic sis heating system from below. It's going to be artificial. Okay, let me just see if I missed any um, any of my questions. I didn't. Now let me get the questions that Ian was flagging. 
uh, explain the 24 hour sun in Antarctica, which is actually sort of fitting based on what you're going after now. So let's, I mean, that's, that's by the way, that is my least favorite of, of everything out of all the things, because of course the Antarctic treaty, we can't do anything down there. Uh, and by the way, it's the, the Antarctic treaty, the un, unbreakable treaty all the way up until 2040, the only in the history of the world, never been an unbreakable treaty. Uh, don't know what's happening in Antarctic with the Antarctic sun. I really don't. It's either multiple light sources or somebody's lying, but I believe that there's 24 hour sun down there. I do. I just don't know how it's being done. There's some things I've got to say, look, I don't know because we don't have access to it. It's fair enough. Let me, uh, before I forget, Logan Paul, you didn't appear in his uh, Flat Earth documentary. No, I walked out of the conference the second he showed up. Okay, let, let's, let's hear this just because it's a good. Answer. Okay, um, Logan Paul was, uh, he and his brother Jake, I consider blights on the internet. And I found out that he, I found out earlier about that whole suicide forest thing. I don't know if you knew his. Well, his that, that, that I knew about from previous. Time. Okay, the suicide forest thing really offended me in, in so many ways. And I and and what the problem was is that uh, the promoter uh, via Logan Paul's request kept it an absolute secret. Nobody knew he was coming. Even the speakers, me, nobody knew. And then it was released twelve hours before the conference opened that oh yeah, it was Logan Paul. I'm going. It can't be this guy. This guy does never made a serious piece in his life. He literally trolls the internet for a living, and he ran out of people to trolls and troll in the United States. So you start going over to Europe and Japan, trolling everyone. He's just a poor man's version of, of Jackass and Johnny Knoxville, uh, who did it better, by the way. I, so, I, I, could, I said he's more akin to Sasha Baron Cohen and, and Borat, or uh, well, but but he does, but but Logan doesn't do disguises. Sasha, Sa no, Sa Sa Sasha or Sasha, so, whatever, Sasha. whatever. He no, Sasha is way more talented than. Than Logan ever ever would be. Anyway, so I just said no, nope. and I tried to talk to the other speakers, and but the problem was nobody knew who he was because his demographic skew is really really young, and so nobody knew. I'm going, look, you can't be here. I go, this this is a this is a mistake, and nobody was listening. So I said, you know what, I'm out of here. I'm not going to be anywhere near his cameras, uh, and I was absolutely vindicated because months later he comes out with this piece and it's just horrible. Well, I mean, I, I, for my own personal benefit, was it pitched as being a documentary or as does it? Well, I mean, you guys don't know who Logan Paul, or the community did not know who he was. But yeah, the community didn't know who he was. But the the thing was, he yeah, he pitched it as a documentary, and his entire staff lied. I, I didn't think. I mean, and I knew it was part of the gag, which was everybody. the The story was that his friend was actually a flat earther, and he was trying to convince Logan, and that's how they were going to get their foot in the door. Uh, and it was just it was a mistake. And and luckily, you know, for there were there were other people that didn't agree. You know, that didn't agree with Logan coming. But I was the only one that left, and I just did it as more of a, a, a statement than anything else. It was like, look, we don't need someone like him anywhere near our community. Now, in the end, it helped the metrics because a lot of people jumped on it, and you know, he says, "Oh, I punked the internet." It's like, no, you didn't punk the whole internet. Uh, but there were a lot of stories written on it. So, hey, great, fantastic, uh, more, more for us. I was just grateful at the end that he did not become a representative for the community. That's what I was worried about more than anything. Was he was that he would actually like people would start asking him questions and he would just kind of muddle his way through it like other people have tried to do and uh, and he didn't so in the end we dodged a, a, a big bullet there uh, i'm going to read one question i think we addressed it but i will say hi to saman mofid who says why is the eclipse seen differently from parts of the earth we did this question right uh, yeah we did this it's no it's no different than than uh, uh the moon phases uh the eclipse look anything on the moon can be simulated it's, I, I can't I can't stress it enough. And I again I know it, that probably bugs bugs you, but no, but yeah, it doesn't bug me because that's the impasse. Everything can be simulated, and everything can be. I, Elon Musk said that for a reason, and I, and I don't I don't want to end your thing with this, but but the I absolutely believe in simulation theory. I absolutely look. I I grew up in that world. I grew, I know exactly what we can make and and what we're capable of. Uh, the problem is is the average person, and I don't care if I had like a week to spend with them, I couldn't explain it to them. I have to start somewhere, which is it's flat and it's enclosed. And if you are willing to buy that, then then I can talk to you about other stuff. But it, you have to start somewhere. And yeah, that is it, because every simulation we make is flat. That a lot of people don't know that. And that is developers make worlds that are absolutely flat. And the reason is because it's easy. It's if nobody wants to build in curvature and all that freaking math. So they just build it. It's like, well, build it flat. No one's gonna notice. And they know it. They absolutely don't. Kind of like the astronaut suit. Nobody knows why it doesn't turn into a basketball. Well, I'd say the, the, mo the most uh, mind-blowing thought experiment that I, or it was scientific, 
it wasn't science. It was a thought experiment. It was the idea that we've been brought up with the, un- the idea that there's a universe, one inter soul universe, and then one astrophysicist put the idea forward of the multiverse, like we're in a sure. pool of water, and each universe comes and expands and bubbles off, and another one comes in. And I mean, that, that, they're interesting. They're interesting theories. But um, yeah, at, at some point, we we are going from sort of sci-fi theorizing to your to the justifications now, which I which I think we can fairly describe as um, finding alternative hypotheses to um, to trump physical observation, um, and then they, that's where it's not that that's not where discussion ends. That's where the point of disagreement occurs, right? And we know we're not going to go any further. Now, the one thing actually, and and which is we're getting to this within yeah. the flat Earth community, you guys, uh, you the, the community itself does tackle other conspiracy theories. They address a number of other conspiracy theories as well. If, if we have to, yes. Okay. I mean, I, I've never been to a Flat Earth conference, but you do discuss the moon landing. You discuss uh, whatever other sort if, of- If it ties into Flat Earth, yes. Uh, th- we talk about that more often than most. And I won't rattle off some of the other conspiracies because I don't want to get dark things or get you in trouble. Uh, all the, any other conspiracy- so the, just about every conspiracy dovetails into flat Earth because the flat Earth is the world, so every conspiracy is inside it. But if it's part of the deception, like everything has to do with the space agency or you know NASA or the the moon landing, yeah, we'll we'll talk about those when it talk when we talk about other conspiracies. Like for me, for example, I'll say, look, if you want to talk about what you take your pick, JFK, Pearl Harbor, every American war. Or the smaller regional ones, yeah, I'll talk about them. But uh, and most people, yes, if they if they believe in flat Earth, they do believe in the others. Uh, but there's a huge difference there, which is you could ask a flat Earther, rank me your top 100 conspiracies uh, in order of importance. That list is going to be very different from person to person to person to person, with the exception of flat Earth being at the top in most cases. Oh, okay. Wait, uh, two questions here. Um, one. How do you explain these six infinity stones and Thanos snap? Okay, <laughs> this is Jared P, and that's a joke. Um, no, no. I like. I, by the way, I'm looking forward to uh, the final movie. I'm. I'm. And I had some. I'm sorry. I'll. I'll. Ask, I'll. 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 Um, I'll answer it with this, which is I love plot holes. I love finding plot holes in movies, which is why I liked looking at Flat Earth because I was looking for the plot holes. Uh, the my ultimate plot hole for that movie is uh, why didn't they just uh, the obvious one? Why didn't they just uh, sling ring? Off his hand in the first place. They why didn't just cut off his hand? I have certifiably no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sure I, I used to I used to own I used to own a comic book shop. I, 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 I don't get to watch movies that are not cartoons for kids anymore. So the no. um, I have not seen that. As I just wanted to ask it as a joke. No, that's okay. One other one. Uh, where is it, Jeremy Anthony? I mean, I, I think we know the answer to this question. How do you account for the fact that objects weigh? Uh, 0.35 percent less, or 35 percent less. How do the objects weigh less at the uh, at the equator than at the poles? Show me. Show. Wait a minute. Point point three five. Hey, Jeremy, is it point three five or th- it's not 35 percent? It's it weighs. No, it can't, well, it can't be 35 percent. percent the poles, which can be explained through centrifugal force, spinning of a globe. I mean, oh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll counter it with this. I'll, I'll counter it with this. If centri because what you're doing, you're you're going to prove one of our points, which is centri- centrifugal force, which is if we have this nice sheen of water across the entire thing, right? Gravity's holding it down, but centrifugal force, meaning like a merry-go-round, is going to pull things outwards, right? If it's a it's two-dimensional like a merry-go-round, it's going to pull things off to the top or off to the side. But if it's three-dimensional, it's going to pull it to the center, right? Why aren't the seas freaking huge at the equator? If water, remember, water moves really, really easily. We know this. You hold a cup of coffee, make a sharp left-hand turn. Water moves really easy when it comes to gravity. Why isn't there this massive band, this massive spare tire around? Why is there any land mass at all that's not underwater at the equator? Remember, it should be like Saturn's rings, but with water. I'm not saying water would be out in space, which would be a whole different thing. Why isn't there this big thing? And why is there water at the poles? Why isn't there bald spots at the top and the bottom? Why are Why are those things not there? Yeah, and this gets back into the flaw, the the not the flawed nature, but rather the uh, what's the word, the, the disprovable nature of the theory. Yes, the rings of Saturn. So, do we acknowledge that Saturn is a, a globe or spherical? No, 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 not not at all. What? I'm sorry if I use those points, but I'm but I I should preface every time I say that, although I won't. Uh, with mainstream science says. So if mainstream science shows us that Saturn's rings, you know, that this is why centrifugal force, this massive centrifugal force from Saturn, then why don't we see that on Earth with water? Water is way easier. Water moves so easy when it comes to gravitational forces. Why don't we see that? 
Sorry. I didn't mean I didn't mean to say I'm not trying to pick and say I'm just saying, look, if one's like this and one's like this, why why don't why aren't they consistent? Oh, I mean that might... oh the moon, the moon perfect argument, which is everyone knows in science that our moon is way too big for our planet. Compared to every other planet out there, our moon is huge. Why? No one explains it. Why why is it very coincidentally? Why, okay, first of all, why is it absolutely locked visually? Meaning we only see one face of the moon and we don't even see a quarter of a degree change in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. Why don't we ever see that? Uh, and why is it, it 400 times more narrow than the sun, but exactly 400 times farther or closer than the sun, which is why well, the eclipse. There, that's a question that's been asked and answered is that it's the, it's the relative size to the distance. It's just a coincidence. Here. It's just a just a lucky coincidence. No. How, how, about, how about parallax scrolling? If some stars are four light years away and some stars are a million light years away, why don't we ever see parallax scrolling? The zodiacs are in the same position every time for thousands of years. The zodiacs have not changed. Parallax scrolling should be real. It should be evident. We never ever see it. And she's like, oh no, we see like this tiny, it was tiny degree of change every once in a while. It's like, no, we don't. I'm just looking now to see how long we've been going for because I don't see the time. Hour 45. Hour 45. Okay, well, let me give a few more seconds to anyone to throw some okay. that are serious questions in case I didn't get to something. But I think um, I got to. I think we've exhausted it for my own personal. <laughs> I think we've exhausted it. I, I've gotten answers to the questions that I've always had. Oh, um, God. Um, and but I also have seen and I've seen the reasoning and I've seen the thought process and, and ultimately it's, it's not to be uh, this is not to, the purpose was never to be demeaning. I, I do view this more as a philosophy in terms of a view of the world and it's uh, sure. as opposed to a science, which 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 is interesting. I mean, the, you're describing something which could be something of a, which could be depicted in a science fiction movie, um, and you know it's 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 a creative it's a creative um, uh, way to interpret the visual evidence that, that, that we live with. The reason, uh, let me, and I, I know, I know we'll wrap here pretty soon, but let yeah. me, the reason why, like, if you want to look up some numbers on this, look up the reason why national geographic reached out and the reason why other people have been getting science is freaking out recently is because of the a survey that was done by u.gov out of uh, London. They're a scientific research group that decided to poll 10,000 Americans and ask them about this because they were curious. And the, um, the 18 to 24 year olds were skewing a third, a full third were, uh, were against the globe. Now they couldn't tell you exactly what it was, but they weren't, they weren't buying the globe anymore. And that was just the 18 to 24 year olds. Uh, it seems like as we go younger, remember, they can't even talk to the, uh, the 12 to 17s. They're not, they're not legally uh, entitled to, to talk to them. So what we kind of figured out was, is that because I was trying to summarize this at some point, it's like, okay, why is this happening? Why am I talking to you? Why, why am I going to meet a high school here in a couple hours? Why am I doing all this, this stuff? Uh, and it's because, remember what I said earlier that people love easy. People always take the easy option. It's why we text instead of call in a lot of cases, although I refuse to text because I'm old. Uh, but, and that is we have now created a model of the world that is easier to understand than the globe. And by that, I mean, we use almost no math. There's a lot of connect the dots, a lot of philosophy, what you're saying, a little little, little smattering of religious overtones. And the science up until now has, again, had all just math. You know, they, it's like, because remember, if you have a globe in one hand and a flat earth on the other, the globe, you know, even though they're about the same size, right? I, I don't have the models in front of me. Um, the globe cannot stand on its own. Remember, the globe needs a solar system. It needs a sun and other planets, and it needs a galaxy around that. It needs a universe around that. Whereas the flat Earth, that's it. That's all you need. In fact, there could be a flat Earth sitting on my desk right now, and that's easier to understand. And I know you say, well, that doesn't make it right. I'm going, no, no, it doesn't necessarily make it right. But people latch on to that. They can get their head around that a lot easier. Remember, because it's going, it's going back to old school. The reason why people, every every culture drew the same freaking snow globe, you can look it up. They all drew the same thing. It's kind of like the Close Encounters thing when everyone drew Devil's Tower. I, uh, that, 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 I haven't seen that in... All right. Well, you know what I mean. It was like, why, why are these people, why is everyone drawing Devil's Tower? It's because that's what they observed. And that's where kind of we're kind of bringing it back with, with new technology that reinforces our observations or at least creates doubt in the globe observations. Mark, how, how can you fight that? Well, okay. I'll, the, the, well, how you can you fight it? Because you're, you're an educated man and science based yeah, well, and all that. snootiness. I, well, I'm not even educated. I just, I know based on my own observation and how light works, what I believe based on my own physical observations of sure. 
of the moon, which is that's because you don't see it yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Now the <laughs> question is this, and we can end it on this. Okay. It's a it's a serious question. Yes. What would it take for you to believe that the Earth is round and gl a globe? Okay. Uh, two things. One is expensive. One is not. Uh, the first thing, and we've been asking this forever because it doesn't exist in real life, which is get a 4K camera. They're cheap nowadays. Box cereal, you probably get one. Put it on a side of a rocket that is leaving. In fact, the Elon Musk car would have been a great one to put on if he hadn't killed transmission right afterwards. But again, publicity stunt, whatever. Hashtag, I'm not buying it. Put a 4K rocket on the side of 4K camera on the side of a rocket. Send it out. Do not turn it off. Do not hit pause. Do not hit anything. Make sure you have a good transmitter on that thing. And watch the world curl underneath as it goes up, goes up. Make sure it's not on the on the first stage or second stage is one of their tricks. They always seem to put it on the second stage. It's like, oh, it's dropping off. Oh, you know, we don't have any television television transmission. And then let it go off. The earth goes into a globe, turns into a ball, and goes away. And that's it. That's all we ever see. We never ever seen that. I would love to see it. It's never gonna happen. It's too expensive. Well, but Mark, I mean wait, wait, wait. No, that's that's that that's the that's the expensive one. The cheap yeah. one. Yeah. Which I tell people, I go, will, does, will this prove a flat Earth? No, but it'll it'll get me a long way, which is get me an astronaut suit. Get me an astronaut suit. Get me in a vacuum chamber. There's big ones out there in universities. Put me in it. Throw the switch. Tell me how I don't die. In fact, you might want to put one of your science guys in another astronaut suit right next to it so I don't feel so bad going alone. Because there is no magic technology that exists in a space program that a spacesuit uses to combat the vacuum of space. It does not exist. It's just something they came up with and they said, you know what? And, and I don't blame them. It was a brilliant move, which is look up if you ever get a chance. Let me end on this, which is look up the old astronaut suit training programs where they were building the astronaut suits in the 50s. They were using plastics and metals because they had to. They knew there was a pressure problem. And then somebody came up with this brilliant idea. It's like, let's just shoot it with cloth. Let's just use a cloth suit. Nobody knows anything about physics. Nobody knows. It'll work. And it did. It worked. Nobody caught it. Nobody to this day, nobody caught it. The astronaut, everyone's running around, fingers, dex dexterity. They're doing electronics. They're playing golf. They're building cars. Nobody has a problem at all with the vacuum. Sorry, that's that's how I'd prove it. Put me in a vacuum well, chamber. The, the, see, and now I'll say the second one would not prove around Earth. The first one, and we can probably first one would. Well, the first one would, but I guarantee you that you there would never be anyone who really believes in it. That would no, not no, no. We would. We, we, people, people are really good at Photoshop analyzing stuff, opening with video editors. We will. We tear apart images all the time, and we know what's. Well, I shouldn't say that. We would concede if it was if it was genuine, but it is so. Look, the informational technology that's available to civilians now has it rivals the military in a lot of cases. We, but if we saw it, it was like, yeah, we can't prove it. You know, we can't prove it's not real. We can see it. I would. I'd love to. I'd love. I'd love to get away from this. I absolutely would. But I can't. I want. I want to. Well, now you've, you've tempted me, maybe to get some nice balloons and strap. But no, I can't strap my GoPro to it because it's got a fisheye lens. So well, it wouldn't matter if you did. I've got. I've got footage from balloons. We got lots of footage from balloons that shows it flat, at one hundred twenty thousand feet. So that's not going to help you. It's got to be a rocket. And so, who's got a rocket out there? That they can shoot up. Elon did, but he's not even allowed to, to televise stuff anymore. I don't know why. All right. Mark? Yes. Thank you very much. I think the next follow-up to this, I might have... Well, I live in the same district as um, a politician, Mark Garneau. I suspect you know who he is. The former Canadian, astronaut? Yeah, Canadian astronaut. So he he's a, he's actually, I think he's a politician of my district in, in Montreal. So I'm going to see if I can't now do a part two, which would be... Maybe a live stream with him, and we'll see. Uh, we'll yeah, do you want you want the easy question to him? If you want, I mean, I don't know if he'll answer it. Uh, there's okay, there's a question to the internet right now. I don't know how many people are going to watch this, but put the question. Just ask him about the spacesuit. Ask him how it works. Okay, I will ask him about the spacesuit, regardless. But I, that would not necessarily be conclusive evidence that the Earth is no, flat. no, it's not. But but I would ask him. I it's just one of those things because sorry, law of thermodynamics. Sorry. All right, Mark. The goal was not to convince the other, but the goal was certainly to understand each other. And I think I, I understand your thought process and I understand your explanations now. Well, um, thank you. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. and, thank, and thank you. Uh, look, the questions, I don't know what the chat room was like. Uh, thank you for the questions that were out there. Uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, you were you were more than fair. And, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't here to I wasn't here to ambush you. If you're ever on the East Coast, say hi. And if ever I'm on the West Coast, I'll ring you up. Okay. Sounds All good. Right. Well, thank you very much. It was It was a pleasure.
All right, guys. Internet, have a good day.